Live from beautiful downtown Bastrop, it's time for the Stage Select, starring Julian Titus and Justin Ham. What could this possibly be? Seems a lot like a podcast on the Lord specifically talking about video games. With your hosts, you're in good hands, not more of the same. Now we'll jump right in. So let's make the unexpected and more. Now we'll get grooving. Now we know there's no way through the door. There just might be some strategy in this chest. Now you can win the special guest. Time for Stage Select. And here are your hosts. Julian Titus and Justin Ham. Welcome, welcome, one and all, to the Stage Select. I'm Julian Titus. And I'm Justin Ham. And we're here. I, yes. I just want you to know that you, in fact, have the hooch. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You have the hooch. Yeah. I could use some hooch. No, no, no. You have the hooch. Oh, I have the hooch. Yeah. Okay. You have the hooch. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I had a th- I had a thing for this, and it totally went out the window. It, it was, was was it the hooch? No, but yeah. it, but well, it was I mean, so, it it'll was... it'll cause that to happen. You know, sometimes. Yeah, I think that's what happened. Actually. Yeah. yeah. Um. God, it, it was it was some sort of brain rot that that I wanted I wanted to say on the show to to prove that I'm still hip and with it. Um. Was it cause, cause I, yeah. I see the demographics, and it's like. You know, I, I would like to get I would like to get some of those zoomers in on the show, but but perhaps making a show with an aesthetic based around variety shows of the 60s is not the best way to go about that, Justin. I'm not. Well, it's tough to say, you know, it's it is. You never say. know. You never know what's going to come back around. Right. Um, it's, you know, they, they you just have to introduce them, you know, to, you know, birthday robot and maybe mm-hmm. they'll go from there. The kids love birthday robot. You never know. You never know. Yeah. God, I wish I could remember what it was. It it was it was definitely something from me listening to the VTubers because so, so many of them are so young. Oh um, man, I I felt so old today, uh which I will get into. Uh, it was <laughs> it was kind of wild, but at the same time oddly refreshing. It was sure, weird. Yeah. I don't know what it is. It, it was it was kind of some sometimes I look at the kids and I go, "You know what? Maybe they are all right." Oh, I, I, I constantly have that feeling. Yeah. Like my, my, my main feeling is, man, I feel bad for you uh-huh. because things are going to be so bad for you. Right. You know, as you become adults, but maybe, you know, maybe you'll, you'll find a way to re- like turn around some of the worst of it and impossible to know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now we should say right off the top, uh, yep. we are aware that, that Justin's yep. new setup came like, like the yes. last episode sounded a little wonky. Yep. It did not sound that way until after the show was yeah, processed and, and yeah, uploaded. We're trying to figure it out. It could yeah. be it could be something going on on the back end part, like when we when it edits, or it yeah. could be my whole thing. And I'm so I'm trying a different setting now, and we'll see how that goes. I yes. think my theory is I over compressed it, which will do that. Also, um, because I do compre- I do like some processing on my end, like before I start it was, editing. It so it might have so, just been way over processed. It, it was and, so damn compressed yeah, that like, maybe it did that. And it, 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 it wasn't like your audio wasn't even the red ring baloney. It was like below the red ring baloney right. by the time yeah, like it went yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, it's it's some it's a whole thing. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> we'll we'll see we'll see what happens. Um, it, it, so if it sounds wonky again, my apologies. We will. Uh, it'll take it's us a, a couple. Yeah, yeah it, it is. It, it's one of those things that I don't know until it comes out how it sounds. I the last time I went through a, a, an audio change, I was doing uh, this is video games, and and so I got to hear it kind of after it would come out and adjust like the mm-hmm. next time I would record and be like, oh, okay, I gotta do this, 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 and this, and slowly I got it there because uh, we were on a like a couple months hiatus or whatever we were on at the time and i was like <laughs> okay i have time to figure this out and this time i'm just like nope jumping right into the deep end whatever mm-hmm. uh we'll, we'll we'll do it it's gonna happen and i'm uh, so yeah it, it is a bit of a process um for sure but yeah so you know be aware 
I'm 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 figuring it out slowly. I've been, I've got every YouTube video going, and I'm like, okay, hopefully I'll figure it out. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm still stuck on the thing that I was trying to open the show with, and I I I, I can't. Yeah, I wouldn't it's, worry it's about gone. it. Yeah, maybe maybe worry. next episode. I'll, I'll maybe I'll next episode. It. You know, uh, or pro- probably what will happen is it'll be like partway through this one, and then I'll say it, and it, w- it won't land because it's not going to make any sense. No, that's fine. Should, that's especially why you should say it. That, 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 yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, okay. Now we're here. We are here. Um, I think I'll kick things off. Okay, great. Because because um, after and I meant to mention this actually last episode, but after I finished Still Wakes the Deep, I found it very difficult to try to find the next thing to play. Mm-hmm. My my initial thought was okay. Still Wakes the Deep was like a nice like short thing on Xbox Live or Xbox Game Pass. Yeah, and I was like. I should knock out Hellblade 2 before I go back to Rebirth because I know that Rebirth is the thing that Rebirth is really like kind of the thing that's blocking me from finishing a lot of other things because I'm like, I can't continue playing other stuff until Rebirth is done. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I a big part of me doesn't want to play Rebirth right now. I I know the feeling I I, I, me playing it on stream for the couple hours that I did kind of convinced me that like i was like maybe this is like my long-term stream thing um mm-hmm. which which you know it it has to wait at the current point in time but not not too long uh, because i'm kind of like that kind of helped me just being sure. able to explain shit i was upset about to the void was like okay this seems like a fun way to go through this um but but and that may be the only thing because I think if I didn't have that I'd be like I don't really want to do it either. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't know. It's not it's not a bad game by any stretch. It's just like I kind of know what happens. But then again, when something happens that I don't expect, I'm like, but I'm upset about this weird thing. I don't know. Yeah, I think for me it, it is the the just constant mini games. Yeah, like it. it oh yeah, they're not great. And I, and I may end up just throwing it on easy next time I fire it up and just kind of breeze through it and, and critical path most of it, except for like stuff that looks interesting to me. Right. Because, uh, again, I'm actually a, I'm actually one of those rare weirdos that didn't like the mini games in the original game all that much. Yeah. So I was like, this is neat. Oh, I don't want to ever do it again. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I think you're right to feel that way. I th- They aren't good. Don't let people convince you that those are yeah. good. They're, they're, at the time, they were revolutionary. They're was like, cool. Look at all they're, this shit that's in here. They're oh, really man. cool and fascinating, right? Yeah. Like, especially to go back. You're like, oh, it's it's neat that they put this CPR mini game here. It's unnecessary as all fuck, mm-hmm. but it's here, and it's kind of neat that they did it. For Look at you from a nostalgia standpoint. Um, but, like... You don't you didn't need to do it. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, absolutely it's, it's, not. It's one of those things, you know. Uh, and I'm glad that I'm glad that at least they took that out of uh, rebirth, and they did yeah. it in a really fun way. Uh, yes, like I, I was like, that's inspired. That yeah, that was a was really good, good nod good. to the yeah. original. Yes, without without having to do the the dumbness of the actual mini game. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, that oh, that man. whole segment actually, because they also fixed the Mister Dolphin part. Oh, cause, oh like, that, I always hated that. That one used to be miserable. Yeah, because it is just guess the spot, guess mm-hmm. the guess the right spot, and there's no real indication. <laughs> oh man, that yeah. part. I and I, also like just with the design of Lower Junon, it actually yeah. makes sense because like I, I remember like the last time that I played Seven, I was like. Okay, so how did everybody else get up there? Like, this doesn't really make sense. Like, yep. why, you know, and, and it's like, oh, no, this wasn't supposed to be, like, this thing lowers, but, like, you know, Cloud gets himself up high enough to lower it, and then everybody else gets uh-huh. up. Like, that actually makes sense. Makes like, sense. okay, yeah. this is this is cool. Uh, that's been the good stuff about, like, the remake series is, yes. like, kind of clarifying weird weirdness so, like yeah, that. Yeah, there's, there's st- some of the things that they've done that with that I'm a big fan of. Um, yes and and sometimes i'm like i i, I don't know if i like that or not um, oh wait so it goes back and forth you're at corral mountain so so you've done all of the all of the um uh costa del sol stuff yeah i think okay i th- I, I, I know there's like a couple side quests that i have to do one i i just kind of gave up on with zip lines i was just like i'll I just yeah fucking, i'll come back i don't care um but then the, the 
Because I kept looking, there's like a whole section of the map that I don't think I can get to yet, and I was that was interesting. So I may there's have- definitely some of those where, like, I think one of the first side quests that I had, like the level restriction was like way higher than what my level was. Like, yeah. okay, they want you to come back here. Then yeah, that's fine. I think I think it was definitely that. Like, I. I I remember like I was like I think I need to go over here for this or at least there's stuff over here because it's showing me the icon for it and then I went to go over there I was like I don't see a path to get there unless I'm just dumb and that's entirely possible because I'm sure. very dumb yeah um but yeah it, it, it's so it's one of those deals the Costa del Sol stuff was an interesting split of doing a decent job of fleshing stuff out I also think I th- also think the the boat ride to costa del sol like the whole setup of that is better yeah um, i agree and and but then there's also like just like a lot of mini game bloat there that i don't like but then other things that make more sense like why hojo's there and yeah yeah so, so the, it, it's like it's a weird like oh i really love this oh i really hate that oh i like uh, yeah, this you know it is, it, it's it's it's, it's constantly so up and that. Down. it's like oh i really like that there's a part on coral mountain that there's a little part the on coral mountain that i've always really really liked um, and it's a, it's, it's kind of a blink and you'll miss it kind of thing, or if you just don't see it or whatever. Um, but there was a part in the original game where you would, I think you just like climb a ladder, you go up, a go up some random path and on the top of the path, it kind of switches to like cutscene mode, not full cutscene, but like kind of like, you know, mm-hmm. we're going to have some dialogue here and it's you, it's, it's cloud Tifa and Aerith, and it's meant to be like the love triangle thing, right? Um, but the only thing there is like, it's a nest and there's items under the nest. Right. And, and they do a different interpretation in this game of it. I was like, I I like that. I kind of, that, that, that works. Like, cause you're not going for the whole, I, I get it. It was kind of, for whatever reason, it was like a little moment that I always kind of dug. Cause it was like, are you going to be a heartless asshole and get the items? Are you going to let this go and, and get some, some brownie points with them? And I always let them go cause of, you know, (laughs) that's that's what i like to do um but i think the items i can't remember if the item's good or not i think it's good i don't say it's a mega elixir or something like that but i don't remember but anyway it doesn't matter that's a the little moments where they were they like kind of like here here we didn't do exactly that but here's an interpretation of it and i'm like oh mm-hmm. that's that's really good that i like that and then then a little follow-up with something i'm like oh i i why why did you do this <laughs> it's a constant in that game yeah. it's wild um, uh so yeah I, w- I was like okay hellblade 2 well i'm gonna you know i only played it for like an hour and a half the first time it's time yeah. to fire it back up and, and let's let's do this and i fired it back up and i started playing it and i was like god damn i cannot i still can't believe that they made they took you know four times as long to make the exact same game only prettier, which was the one yeah. improvement the game didn't need. Right. And, and I was like, I don't want to do it. Like, yeah. you know, I the original Hellblade was my game of the year that year. But again, as I said, the, when I first talked about Hellblade 2, with a lot of caveats, mm-hmm. you know, understanding like what it was and, and what the scope was. And then playing this one, like all of that, I think, does it a huge disservice. And right. There may they there may be some really amazing like story stuff in there and and some good characterization oh, right. of Senua that that I'm missing out on. I just don't want to do it, man. You I do. just don't want to do it. You know, if you want if you want to know the story stuff, so just go watch it. Go watch I, it I might YouTube. I might do that. You know? Yeah, because like it, it was one of the, it was another part where I was having to do the find the symbols in the in the environment, and oh, I was yeah. like, and and it seemed like more annoying this time than the first time hmm. be, because it felt like this is i don't i don't remember this in the first game it might be this way in the first game but i don't remember the voices in my head being like no that's the wrong way you know like like oh right like that type of thing and you know it was it was kind of getting into atreus like just nipping at my heels in god of war like you know being like no that's not that's not what you're supposed to do father it's like shut the fuck up kid like i didn't play (laughs) enough of it but it always seemed like the voices were just like really judgy in the first game like con- like and, and uneasy maybe, to make you feel really uneasy the entire time like it yeah was, and, it was and like I, a mood i might just be misremembering it I'm like too, maybe it, it was exactly like this yeah. um i and maybe it's just the fact that like you know i think that game I, yeah that game came out like right before god of war 2018 and right. my patience for that type of shit is like way lower now because of two god of wars right. and two horizons that 
you know, do do that type of like yeah. really, really like aggressive hand holding. Right. Uh, in in ways that I don't like, and again, I th- I think also my mental health is a lot worse now than it was when I played mm-hmm. the first game, and and that definitely no, has that. a bearing on it. Yeah, um, where it's like I don't I don't I already have these thoughts naturally, like I don't need to add to right. Them. God damn, oh, I, yeah, it 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 bugged me enough from just watching the intro. Where I was like, I I don't think I need to even watch anymore. <laughs> I was yeah. kind of like, yeah, I'm. This is going to bug the shit out of me. It, 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 I was like, this is awesome, but I don't know if I can handle it. Like that mm-hmm. kind of, it, it's a lot. Like it's really cool, but it's a lot. Yes. Uh, so yeah. Um, and so that, that began a, an ongoing quest of like, well, I, I, what do I play next? Yeah. And, um, there was a lot of stuff to try and I did, I did try a lot of stuff. Um, the first thing that I tried because it was available was, uh, the first descendant. Yeah. Which, which is that, uh, Korean, uh, like third person, you know, right. yes. sci fi loot based shooter. Yeah. Uh, gorgeous graphics. Yeah. Feels real good in the hands. Like, mm-hmm. like I think the shooting is really good. I think the movement is really good. I keep meaning uh, to try it out. Yeah. Um, and I got immediately turned off just by the, the overall free to playness of it. That was so I watched Gersman play it because he mm-hmm. was playing it and I was like, I needed I needed something to take a nap to. Uh, that's the reason I lo- <laughs> watch a lot of things on YouTube. No, I, I get was it. like this, this seems like the perfect thing to, to take a nap to because I'm yeah. like, I'll be interested in it for a little bit. And I'm like, OK, and then I'll drift off. And I did take a nap to it. Um, but what I was seeing a, a lot of it, I was like, you know, I was thinking about giving this a try, but there was a lot of stuff where I'm just like that. I I don't know if that's for me. <laughs> I don't know if that's for yeah, me or not. It I'm torn on it. Uh mm-hmm. cuz again, like it feels it really feels good. Great. Like I, I, it looks like it plays really fun. It plays Absolutely. really well. Um I you know, I, I'm kind of hit or miss with like the overall character designs. Uh They are very Korean. Very yes. And very and there's Korean. something there's something about the Korean sci-fi design that some of it lands with me and some of it really whiffs yep. and and it's it's really hard for me to like kind of put my finger on what it, it's funny I'm, I'm really high on i love their fantasy design for whatever reason mm-hmm. i don't know what it like black desert is, I'm, I'm like man everything that come like outfit wise or whatever that they put out i'm always like man that looks really cool like a lot yeah. of the time like I, I think it looks great um and and like a lot of the stuff in this game like reminds me of that even like even the parts that I always hated about like when I for the short time that I did play that game mm-hmm. um which wasn't very long not not in in an MMO sense I barely touched it um, but you got through I think you got through like what like the main campaign right? I got or, or at least the, like the first part of it a good chunk of the main campaign I, yeah. and then it starts doing like it's like starts, base game stuff it's yeah it starts you know shooting levels up on you and being like you're gonna have to grind to get to this next thing and I was like I I don't I, I would get bored and then start a new character and then eventually mm-hmm. I would run out of characters that I could start because you know there's a you know limit they on want, that they want you to and pay I, for those slots yes I, I yeah I figured that out eventually and I was like okay <laughs> well this ain't for me um and a lot of like just just like designs i'm like okay yeah no i see the black desert here like i I know it's not the same people i don't think it is anyway no no but but they're you know because i think um a, a lot of different regions you can kind of get like like i remember yeah. the first time i experienced this was beyond good and evil where i was like this feels french Right. And Mm -hmm. and like I couldn't really explain why it felt French. It was just like this. This feels like it's from this region. Right. Fable felt very British. Right. Like like it was like all over that game. Right. And and yeah. So so certain regions have their thing. Right. And I think it has its. Yes, it definitely does. You know, as Western gamers, you know, for a long time, we only had like the Japan stuff. Right. That was like our filter through like Mm -hmm. all gaming. And then, you know, we started to get more of a Western, you know, lens for stuff around the 360 era and then you know we did start to get certain other regions right and we got to more exposed to it and yeah it's like uh you know there's a lot of stuff coming out of both korea like south korea and china right now where it's like everything looks fucking incredible yeah and it's like but it's always like the studio's first game and i'm like how yeah like how are you doing this there's some sort of template man going on there there. it's it's wild it's wild 
Um, but yeah, and, and there, there, you know, my, my thing with like the, the South Korean sci-fi design is there's just something about a lot of it where I'm like, this feels generic, even though I've only seen it a handful of times and I don't know how to like really. Oh yeah. Don't, don't you know, get me, don't get me twisted that. when when I say I like the fantasy designs in, in their games, they, they are still generic a lot of the time. Like there's true, nothing true. really crazy or innovative going on. Like, yeah, it's, it's but, but I guess that. what I'm saying is, but not generic to other stuff that I've seen, if that makes sense. Okay. Like, yeah, that makes that, sense. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm getting at is, is it like, I've, I've seen it in other Korean games. Right. And even though I haven't seen it very many times, it already feels kind of played out yeah. and it's it's weird i don't know um i get you but but again gorgeous plays really well um but so right off the bat like it does the thing that i hate it's it's got the the fake mouse cursor and you can't get around it like it yeah when you're on a console and it feels it feels bad to navigate through the menu and you know what i'm talking about you know exactly what it looks like you uh-huh. it, you don't have to have seen the game to know exactly what i'm talking about yep right like it, it is the destiny menu uh Very much yes and there's a there's a lot of shit in there and it, it feels very overwhelming in a way that i don't particularly like i um, think they're going for a bit of destiny and and uh warframe which is mm-hmm. you and know, warframe Warf- is very complicated yeah very kind of, like they're they're going for that level of something and sometimes they don't like it, it appeared to me like sometimes they would like kind of explain things very poorly which i think is somewhat of a translation thing possibly in, in a lot of it yeah um and even if they did explain it good it, sometimes i would look at it at some of the stuff that you know gersman was showing and i'd be like I didn't understand a word of that. <laughs> I, I that is I I would they they would show off systems and I'd be like I would if I was playing this I just wouldn't even bother or because it just sounds like a pain in the ass like or it yeah. sounds like a grind fest to actually get it to it's 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 one of those um those uh online things where it's like hey you get a point zero five percent boost to this thing that's great right and you're like. No, I don't really care about that. There's definitely you know? an aspect of that. Yeah. Like, so I got through like all the two, all of like the prologue stuff and that was pretty cool. Right. Yeah. Like, the, the, like it did a good job of like having these like set piece moments. And there was like a, like an o- other NPC that was like moving around with you. And there's a, there's a pretty cool boss fight and there's some story stuff. And it's like, okay, like I'm kind of digging. Was, there was one this? design of a character. I don't know if she's the one that moves around with you, but she had a bunny. Leather, she had no, it wasn't bunny. Um, okay. Oh man, the one the one I was into. I don't think you can play as him. Um, it, it, she had a leather jacket, and I was like, all right, she seems cool. <laughs> I'm I'm a sucker for a leather jacket. You were really. a you were a sucker for a leather jacket. It was, I'm, a, spa- I'm it was a space leather jacket. I was into it. All yeah, right? very into it. Um. um and so once you get past like all the prologue stuff and everything, it kind of dumps you into like the hub yeah and that's where things like really started to fall apart for me because it's it's sensory overload for one because like there's just you know icons everywhere and i don't know how i feel about this i think i think there's a better way to do this and i I think final fantasy 14 probably does it the best where you have a mini map and the icons are on the mini map and then as you get close to the characters the icons are above their heads but uh first ascendant does it the destiny way which is that the icons are on the screen even like through walls okay and so it, it's very it makes it like very cluttered and yeah. and you know i didn't like that also like the the frame rate tanks when you're in the hub area yeah i and i seen that yes if i notice the frame rate tanking you've got a problem oh it's um <laughs> it, it, so that happened to gersman when he was playing it mm-hmm. and i remember he was like this so far has only happened to me on the console version of the game and it only mm. happens here right because there's, there's a ton of characters around it it's, yeah it's going for more of an mmo feel than yes. even destiny does and 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 the way he his theory on it his he was playing it on pc and it was it was doing it to him he was like it hadn't done this to me before like but i think since i started streaming it's taking just enough resources from Mm -hmm. it to to where it triggers something in there so i think is so his thought i'm stealing it from him his thought was that when you're in that place it goes to some sort of limited animation mode 
to like kind of get get it get you to point A to point B or whatever. Yeah, and, and that makes and sense. It, and it really looks weird. Like it it's does, really it, off putting. It it, yeah, especially for like that to be like the first thing that you see like oh, after yeah. the prologue. It, oh yeah, it's not a it's not a good look. No, it's not. It's really um, not. But I was still like, okay, well, you know, this is just the hub, whatever. Let me let me like move the story along a little bit. And I did I moved the story along a little bit and then got into like my first like they take you to another area and there's like quests there. And so I pick up the first quest and it was like it tells you right off the bat, it's like, you know, quest is like about a two minute long thing, and I'm like, mm. oh. And I did like three or four of those two minute long ish yeah. quests where it's like you kind of go to a point, you kill some enemies, you know. Sometimes there's a little bit of variation on it, but like yeah. I was like, oh, this is what this game is, isn't it? Yeah. Like instead of having like, you know, some interesting like levels to go through oh, no. with like story happening. Yeah, no. You know, like I'm fine with this being a an aspect of the game, right? Like yeah. if, if you want to go grind for some gear or for right. some levels, like by all means. But with this being like the main thrust of of the the game, I'm like Oh, uh, no, I'm out. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm out. This I is... kind of, yeah, I, the more I watched it, the more I was like, I don't think this is going to be my thing. Yeah, I, like, I, I, I already, I already, up, though. I already, like, uninstalled it. I was like, nope, this is just taking up space on the yeah. hard drive that I don't need. Yeah. Um, It's a shame. Like, I, and again, I'm not saying it's a bad game by any no, stretch. Seems, I, I think it seems neat. If you're I think it's very kind of much thing, worth checking out. Yeah, if, if you're, especially for free and yeah. like, yeah. It, you it, know, it, you know if this is for you almost instantly. Exactly, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Even if you're like kind of a fan of that genre of things, like there's probably something to find there that you'll you, you might get into. Who knows? Definitely. It's hard to say. Yeah. Um, um you know, and I know I know like Destiny Two kind of wrapped up it, its overall story, right? So like yeah. if if you got to the end of Destiny Two and you're like, Well, I don't really feel like grinding out the rest of this because the story's over now, mm-hmm. you know, this might be the thing that kind of fills that Destiny Two hole until, you know, Bungie's next thing. Right. So absolutely. Uh, you know, you never know. Um, and it's funny. Cause so so this this first ascendant came out on PC and Xbox. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, the uh, first ascendant came out for PC and Xbox. Zenless Zone Zero came out for PlayStation. I thought that was interesting that like each of the consoles got like a big free to play thing. Uh, which obviously they're all going to be multi plat. They're all going to be everywhere mm-hmm. at some point. But I guess they they each like kind of bid for their free to play thing, you know, right? Like ex- like exclusivity window, and this is what how it shook out. And it's right. just it's also funny that they came out within like days of each other. Right. Like I think I think Zenless Zone Zero came out like a day after, yeah, uh, something like first ascended or something like that. Yeah. Uh, so I checked out Zenless Zone Zero as well. Uh, I never played Genshin Impact or or Honkai Star Rail. I, Honkai is so fun to say; it's so dumb. It's I'm fun. sure I'm sure it's like a legit word. It's just, it's just I, I I just think of honky. Yeah. Uh I would I would say uh, my I don't I don't know is that what is oh, explain what Zenless Zone Zero is and I would I will explain Honkai St- Star Rail. Um, at least what I think that game is. Yeah. Um, so so these these all three so Genshin Impact, Honkai Star Rail, and Zenless Zone Zero are all. Um, free to play games from Hoyoverse. Right. Now, I don't know if, if the name, the developer name being Hoyoverse implies that they're like a connective thing. Uh, I really don't know, um, but I Genshin don't, Impact yeah, is like the fantasy so. game. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, it, and it's, 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 it's Breath of the Wild with gotcha mechanics. Like right. It's Breath yep. of the Wild with like tons of characters to, yep. to pull and level. Um, I'll let you explain Honkai Star Rail. Yeah. Honkai Zelda's Star Rail. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> okay, yeah. Star Rail is like a turn-based um, RPG kind of thing, but like with with um, it's almost like Persona, but but with gotcha mechanics. Basically, you you're you're pulling for characters. They all have their own backstory. I I want to say they're they like you're learning more about them, but you have to pull them, I, or maybe you don't. Maybe you get them in a temporary thing just to show them off, but they're not actually in your party or something mm-hmm. like that. There's, but but it's basically, in my opinion, Persona, but with you, you, gotcha with mechanics. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, Zenless Zone Zero is their um, kind of character action Got bent it. on this. Yep. Okay. Uh, very, you know, very stylish, like extremely stylish. Like, right. dude, the animations in this game are top notch. Right. It, it's kind of incredible. Like one of the first characters you get 
is very much doing a Deadpool type thing. Not so much as like not not breaking the fourth wall so much as just like he's wearing a mask, but that doesn't stop him from being like the most like mm-hmm. you know expressive character that you have so far. Right. Um, and he just the way he moves is you got to see it. Like you just right. got you you got to look at this dude. It's I kind of amazing. It. Uh, yeah. No, that's that that sounds cool. For yeah. Sure. Um, um it's it's got an interesting like hook which is that like um you actually the character that you choose at the beginning it there's it's like the brother and sister and they and they run this like video store they do they do something similar in in honkai uh where you pick a you pick a male or female character because because yeah it's it's going to be your like self insert yeah yes yes um and but they're not the ones that see combat which i find interesting okay uh so they're just there to like so they run a video store but that's just like the like the legal front for them to run their shady like agency where where they're helping out um i think it's hollow runners okay because so the world of this game is like something happened i'm not sure exactly what but like right the like the world was kind of like split into these weird like shards called hollows where if you go into a hollow mm-hmm. it's like an alternate reality of the world but like there's monsters there and right if you stay there too long you can end up mutating into a monster right. and it, it becomes very difficult to navigate your way out and right. so you have to kind of know what you're doing and so there's professional like hollow runners that go into hollows to do stuff Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure, you know, what the economy is here, but like that's yeah, that's kind of what no it is. Idea. Um, and yeah, the, so the moment to moment action is very much, you know, like you've got your melee attacks, or well, it actually depends on the character. So like the first character right. you get, she's very much like using like a like a short sword, but then Billy the kid uses guns, so like all of his attacks are, are projectile based. Right. Um, and there's tons of characters, and that's where the gotcha mechanic comes in. You pull them, um. And there's like a really cool like tagging thing where like if you hit an enemy, if you stun an enemy and then hit them with a special move, like it goes into slow motion, then you can hit a button to tag out into one of your other characters. You can have up to three in a party. Okay. Uh, and then they come in and do their special attack. And so you can actually like possibly like chain into mm-hmm. all three characters for certain things. So like that's really cool. That is cool. Uh, yeah. But then it does this weird thing where it almost turns into darkest dungeon for a second, but without the stakes where you're just moving along like a board okay, and, and finding the path. And like, depending on what spot you land on is if you get into like an encounter, it's not so much like you're running through a level huh. as it is. You're like going on this board. And then if you hit an encounter, then it's almost like a, like a God of war, like old God of war arena type thing. Okay. Or, or like an old devil may cry arena right? where you just take out the enemies. And then once they're done, you move back to the board and, and you're I don't know. I, I don't know you. how I, I feel you. about I get what you that. mean. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. But I don't know how I feel about that aspect of the game. That's kind of weird. I, it, I guess it sets itself up to where like, hey, we don't have to design this huge world or anything to yeah, that's you know, go, go nuts through. Um, but we still get all of our cool action stuff in there and we save resources that way. That's what it seems like. I'm yeah. not really sure, but which yeah. is weird since their first game was very much a massive open world. And also yeah. it's like one of the most successful games in the world. So it's not like they don't have the money to no. right. make assets, right? Like yeah. that's the crazy part to me. If this was their first game, it makes a lot more sense instead of it being their third game where they're making like just hand, right. like, just fistfuls of cash right. constantly absolutely um, yeah, no it's, it, i i feel like they're gonna be uh, the i guess maybe the the other theory is like well well get people people don't want to maybe explore the level they just want to get right into the action and this is for them uh i don't i don't know yeah it, it's hard it, to because it, we already have a, a world explore or exploration game that's genshin impact you can go mm-hmm. play that and they're trying to separate it a little bit i yeah. i don't know they're, they are very say. different flavors and i right and i will say that like i saw today that like woolly played it right and he's never right. touched the other two games and i'm like yeah you know they're they're, they're, gonna, they're gonna find your your niche they're gonna eventually. Find, they're gonna find all of ours yes. eventually yeah absolutely yeah. um i liked what i played but again like i could see what it was once i got past like the the big like preliminary stuff and i was like yeah i just this isn't this isn't what i want to do right now um Mm -hmm. i just i don't think that i'm gonna i'm gonna stick with this um but again you know if you you know if this is for you you know if it's for you and it's free like yeah 
That's and I do recommend thing. checking it out. Like, I don't think it's a waste of your time to check it right. out. I, th- I think there is a lot of cool shit in there. And like yeah. the designs are neat. Um, and uh, yeah, it at least look, you at least should look at a, tra- at a trailer. Cause it's like those animations are something, man. It's- right. I believe it. <laughs> I believe it. Um, I, I'll I'll continue. I, I I'll, I'll break it up. I, I also because okay. I want to save my throat, but um, I, but I I I I was still looking after this, Justin, and then I'll I'll get back. I'll get okay. around to that later. <laughs> And now, a word from our sponsors. Are you interested in visiting the dark web, but you're computer illiterate and don't know what you're doing? You need Midnight VPN, the only VPN that will allow you to access everything the dark web has to offer. Order a hit on your enemy. Find a good recipe for human meat. Overthrow a government. You can also stream content from Netflix that's outside your region. Get Midnight VPN. What's a VPN? Don't fucking worry about that. Yeah, I don't. I don't have a whole heck of a lot. Um, but let, let's see. What have I done this week? I um, I made a new thing in WWE that that came out really well, and I was pretty proud of it. It took me an awful lot of time, but I'm getting better at certain things, and I'm proud of myself. Like I made this thing, I was like, I came out really good. I'm actually legit proud of myself. <laughs> Like, like I was, I was like, I'm getting better. Like, I was already pretty decent at th- some of this stuff, but I'm getting better at certain things that I like. I always like set kind of a new goal every time I play this stupid game. Like every year, like this year is the year where I get good at this thing, and this mm. year's and and f- I'm starting to like get come into my own on like a certain thing that I started doing, and I'm like, oh man, I'm this is com- this is good. I'm I'm getting better. That's that's great. Do you um, restrict yourself just to the character stuff, or have you, or do you like to mess around with like ring design and belt design? And, I've done and- that, but a few times. I, that stuff is it's less fun to me. Mm-hmm. But I I I I at one point, if if I didn't if I wasn't working and I was just playing WWE a lot, which there there have been t- years where I'm like there ain't shit to, else to do. I'm just gonna sit here and do this. Mm-hmm. Um. I've I've like designed a, a pay per view for every month and all, all sorts of different stuff and had you know enough on my roster to do everything and sometimes I plan out stuff in my head where like I'm like you know I should what I should do is I should get one little indie promotion and then one slightly bigger indie promotion and then they start having stuff together and it'll be fun. that'll be cool I'm like you're never gonna do that you know how much fucking work that is you're never going to do that stop tr- stop acting like you're going to do that um but yeah that, i've done i've done some of that stuff before but never yeah never as big as i sometimes plan for it to be i guess mm-hmm. um but yeah that, that's wwe I, I made a thing i was proud of it eventually i'm going to show it on stream cuz that'll be fun um i still and i still need to finish that stupid story mode i'm at the part where it actually gets funny and stupid maybe i'll play it tomorrow i don't know i doubt it i doubt it um the okay yeah i just i just i need you Mm. like for tomorrow's stream i I, well i mean it doesn't have to be tomorrow's stream i would like it to be tomorrow's stream because the longer that you sit on this the the more you can be ruined on it yeah i need to watch you play i am part-time worker I seen that. I seen. I, I I did look at that. I I I wasn't. I I think I fell asleep after I looked at it. It was. It was a. It's been a week. <laughs> um. But um, I I did look at that one. Um. It it's my only thing with that game is it. it I love a game. The, the the games I've played on stream most of the time are taking themselves very seriously. Sure. And that's my favorite part of them. And this one isn't. It's very much like, no, we know what it is. I, I wish I, I should have told you, don't look at it. Yeah. Just stream it. Yeah, um, that, it's possible. Yeah. Because, I, because, so the, the, what happened was I ended up, this is like a rare thing where like one of the Hololive girls was doing a live stream of this and oh, I didn't okay. know what it was. And I tuned in 
and I ended up watching almost the entire stream. Nice. Okay. Uh, and and it was great because like you 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 mentioned this on one of your streams, um, yeah. but I, I definitely got the sense from her also because she's like she's a zoomer. This might actually be her first job, right? Um, where it's like. Oh, you've never done retail before. Right. And like I like she was getting like visible well not visibly uh, but she she was getting like like you could tell that she was getting stressed right. about about like maintaining this this konbini, this convenience right. store in Japan. And and like by the end of it she was like spent. <laughs> right. I, I I I you know I may give it a shot. Um yeah. uh I may give that a shot. There is um there was a Chinese FMV d- dating simulator that just came out, and I can't find it now. So, but I'll eventually find it. Um, I forgot what it's called. I don't think I'm going to play that anyway. But eh, I'll play something. I, I, I I'm kind of fifty fifty on whether I'm going to get to play anything this week because I. I so my sister is in town this week. Mm-hmm. Um, so that presents another couple of hurdles that i have to overcome true um so i've already been like maybe i don't stream this week we'll see so if that doesn't happen i'm sorry in advance but it's fine um but um let's see i played so i played been playing stupid wwe still because that's kind of just my waste some time game um but the let's see the other stuff that i played is i guess more interesting um, I guess the other game, it was just game singular that I played is a lot more interesting. It, it is a game called until then. Um, and it's, um, it's one of those, the game it reminds me the most of is the, um, Oh God, here I go again. I already forgot it. Space um, for the unbound. Cause I remember, yeah, cause space you, for you the asked unbound. me before. Yeah. Yes. Space for the unbound guy for whatever reason. I love that game, and I always forget its name now that it, it's, now it's kind it's of out of my mind. It's not a great name. It's not name. the greatest name. It not does not exactly name. roll off the tongue very well. No, no, it very much doesn't, but – and that's Oh, but I'm it. looking at it now, and yes, it, it is definitely giving off those vibes. Yes, very much so, but with a lot more um, – Way more polish. Way more polish, yes. Yeah. The, There's like depth of field in this scene. Holy oh, shit. Oh, oh dude, it it's it's – I love the style of the game. Yeah. Um, It's really awesome. Um, but it is, it is one of the, and I'll give it a lot of credit. It, it's not doing a lot of the stuff that space for the unbound was doing where it's like, there's going to be like random battles and stuff like that. There's nothing like that. Like you're, you're not doing anything insane like that. It, it, it's, 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 it's stays out of its own way. A lot of the time it's just telling its story. There are many games in between and a lot of them are like really short and sweet and pretty easy to do and kind of like break up the action pretty well. Like there's one where um, you're on, you're on a, you go to this girl's chess match and you meet her best friend and her best friend is, is like um, uh, how to explain her. She, she over the top we'll say. And so you have, you go out and you, you get fish balls with her um, and, and, and you have to stab the fish balls with with a with a skewer and it's mm-hmm. just, it's just a little mini game where the thing moves back and forth and you hit the green or whatever but you're competing against her the entire time and it's 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 neat like i was like this is kind of yeah. cool this is all right and there's there's some where you're at the fair and stuff like that and they there was there was a couple where i'm like oh you actually did some cool stuff with this the way you implemented this was really awesome um and i it's also one of those games that's tough to tell you why it's cool because you can't do it without spoiling certain things. <laughs> it's yeah. it's one of those things. Um, it's it's was, really neat. I was looking up the the developer while you were talking because yeah. I, I was I I was like, okay, where you know who what region is this from? Um, and I couldn't actually find it on their website. There's like they have like no information about themselves on the website. It's just their games. But uh, on Twitter, they're based in the Philippines, and it's like okay, Philippines. Yes, yes. Um, I th- I want to say that the game itself is either in, like kind of based in like a fictional Philippines, or it's mm-hmm. like based in a fictional Mexico type thing. They never really say where. Okay. Um, I, I, at least I, I can't remember. Um, yeah. It's one of those one of those types of things. I I immediately got a hit, like a I'm like immediately when you you there's a part where you know you your character I I love the opening scene of this game. I'm sorry to derail already. The opening scene is so genius. Like I was like that is so much fun. That's so cool. Um, 
you basically you go to start the game and it triggers like an alarm clock and you and you have to sit there and press it to wake him oh it's 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 awesome <laughs> like I, it sounds so dumb until you actually go play i was like that's so good i love mm. that um anyway um yeah, but at, right immediately after that, you you get a, a like kind of your street, your your life day in the life of the kid that you're playing as, um, and you're walking down the street, and I'm immediately like, I'm like, this is very Latin America somewhere. I don't know where. I can tell this is this that region though. Like mm-hmm. there, everything about it is screaming that, um, and it's it's but it's really good. It's really really good. There's there's definitely the um. Uh, the translation things here and there, but they are very minor. And I mean, very minor. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, the complaints I have, and they do have complaints. The UI is awful. Sometimes just the regular menu UI is, is weird. Um, like, um, it's too dark. So you can play the game on a controller, right? Mm-hmm. But like, you can't tell what the hell you have highlighted if you're playing with controller. So like, oh, I hate when that happens, dude. Yo, you, I, I can't tell at all. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I switch over to mouse, then I can tell. Right. And I think that's me being on PC and it going, well, you have one of those right there. Why aren't you using it? <laughs> but the game works better in certain spots on controller, like walking around. That's a, it feels very natural on a controller, but, I also and and there's also parts where um it'll switch to kind of a social media mode um because it's telling a lot of its story through like here's a post about this like right. here's a post about this weird thing that's going on in the world so you get a sense of what's happening and here here's something one of their friends posted and and like what's cool is though like you'll like a post and there's one part where I liked a post and and the kid went Hey, I know you're you're not doing anything because you just like my post right now and like all this other like tech, and then it goes from there. I was like, that's pretty cool. I like yeah. that. Um, Look, man, if th- th- just because I'm on social media does not mean that I have the mental bandwidth right now to actually interact with anybody. Like those are two <laughs> very different things, and you should not expect that. Oh, well, he's he's reblogging stuff right now, so well, he's available. It's like no, I have I have the capacity right now to just reblog and yeah. look at shit. To to be fair, they were on the same train together, and he could see them, so it, it was okay. Thing. Um, yeah. it was it was it was funny. Um, yeah. but anyway, um. They, they I'm, I'm definitely the stuff. person who will say like good night to someone and then continue to like yeah yeah oh you know, absolutely be yeah. online for another two hours oh absolutely and they yeah. can see my activity but it's like no but but I don't want to but, but talk I don't want to wanna, no, right I'm, now I'm I'm checked out mentally yeah, yes no, exactly we're done here um absolutely <laughs> um but no uh, the uh yeah they they do a lot of the social media stuff and that stuff works really well with a mouse and sometimes i have to fight to get it to do anything on the controller Mm -hmm. and it it, it, it's it i feel like that's a pc thing where it's just like it just won't switch over to the controller because it it has the fake cursor thing for that part because you're you know you're liking and you know you're click you can click on their profile and do certain things and stuff like that um but sometimes it doesn't switch over so i'll just Mm. i just like i guess i gotta i mean the mouse is right here it's fine it's not a big deal for me but like i i hope if it did come out to console or something if it is on is, consoles yeah. and that's probably I, if i play this that's how i'll play it so i'll I, definitely I, let I'd you be know cu- yeah i'd be curious how that goes um and and everything so far uh like storyline wise though like uh, other than like the, the ui thing i keep thinking there might be one other complaint i have and I'll, I'll think about it as we go here but other than that like i'm really really liking it i'm not too far in right now um uh, without spoiling like almost anything like just the like day-to-day high school drama stuff your your character i i relate to the main character a lot because mm-hmm. he is just an absolute slacker like but is smart is clearly smart and and memorizes the, like is his thing is like he won't study for anything until like the last 10 minutes or whatever, right before the test, which is exactly mm-hmm. how I used oh, to yeah. take tests. <laughs> like, and, and, and I never, then, I never, I never learned how to study. I just, oh, me you know, I absorbed the information as best I could and yep. retained enough of it to do well. Yep. You know, same on, here. on the tests. Yep. Same here. Um, but not, you know, it, it, that it goes from there, but there's a yeah. lot of like, you know, 
it, I almost want to call it like Latin America Dawson's Creek sometimes. Like, we're, hey, man, it, that like I I love a good like high school oh, drama, yeah. drama type thing. Like, Very that's kind of that. my jam. But uh, but there's, there's other stuff. There's other stuff. And yeah. that other stuff is really cool. And, cool. and really interesting. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's what, that's what I liked about Space for the Unbound. Yes. Like, you know, yeah. that it, ha- it had really good slice of life to it. Uh, yes. and, and in a culture that I knew nothing about, which was right. very interesting. We do have at least one listener in Indonesia. And I apologize because, like, I, you know, I'm just completely like, like all I know of, of Indonesian culture is from Space for, Space the, for Unbound the Unbound at this point. Yeah. But, um, it was, but it was, it was cool. Great. It was really to, cool. Yeah. To learn that stuff there. And then there's also other stuff in yeah. a Space for the Unbound where it's like, oh. Okay, I want to see. I want to see where that goes. Right, right. So yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Yeah, it, it. This one takes a little bit longer to get to that point where you're like, okay, that. All right, there we go. It, mm-hmm. it, it hints at it a little bit towards the beginning, and I was like, okay, that's weird. I should probably remember whatever that was, and then eventually it kind of full blown drops it on you. And I was like, all right, now I'm in. Uh, yeah. I'm still not too far into it. Like I think it's five. Tra- it's about a 15 hour game. I'm. I definitely have more than uh, what I actually played it for. As I remember, there was a thing happened in the middle of playing it. Uh, six point six point four hours is probably nothing like that. It's probably actually more like four. Uh, okay, because <laughs> uh, I left it on pause for a while. So about a third uh, of the way through it. Yeah, like may, yeah, it's like yeah, something like that. Maybe. Yeah. Um, I think I'm two chapters in. I think there's like six chapters, something like that. Um, but yeah, it's really cool. I I really like the characters. Um, it, it's good. It's good. Um, there, uh, yeah, really, really nice game. I until I, then, until then, definitely worth a look. Um, not until like, dawn. That's also worth your time, but yeah. very different. Very different. Very <laughs> different. Um, yeah, it, it's uh, it's going some places. I'm digging it. I hope. I hope I get to. It's one of those things that I, like I got so into it, and then my sister came into town. I was like, oh, I can't play this in front of my niece. Oh, I gotta <laughs> find something different to play. Right. Um, which I guess is the other thing I've been doing. I, I la- last night my sister got here and I I was playing some video games with my niece. Um, she showed me um Metopia, which is the uh RPG me game. Mm-hmm. Um, and she is very into that. Um, which is awesome. Um, yeah, it, yeah. You know, I I know from you know I did I did meet your sister and and uh, brother in law. Yes. Yes. When I met you, but also from, you know, when you guys were doing uh clickbait update, right. You know, your sister and, and her husband, you know, not, I wouldn't call them straight up normies, but they yeah. definitely, you know, hew way closer to that yes, spectrum absolutely. than where we're at. Yes. But I've it's all, interesting yeah. that like your niece is somehow turning into a geek a little Regardless, bit. Regardless. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah, she's a, a huge bit. wrestling fan, which is a different, you know, that's a type of geekdom. It's just yes. a different type. Yeah. Um, but gaming wise, like, yeah, like when you told, like, because, yeah, you were telling me that, like, she, there's a job system in this game. So, yeah, like, she, she, yeah, and she's super into it. Like, yeah. she loves, she, her favorite thing is, like, she loves that she can, like, make all the people in her party. And she's like, she's telling me what classes are good. She's like, listen. Uncle Justin, you want to <laughs> you want to pick a wizard here, okay? I, or you want to, or I think it's a wizard or a mage. I can't remember mm-hmm. what they. You know yeah. the one, the magic class. The right? I, they call it different, whatever. Yeah. Um. She's like, you want to pick that? Now, listen, you're not. You're gonna think they're weak for a second, but I'm telling. I'm like, I'm like, so I, I listen. I I'm, a, I'm always, I'm always I the know, wizard. <laughs> okay. I know how this works. She's like, and the cleric is, is they heal people. Right. And she's like, yeah. I'm like, uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm like, now I don't know what these other ones on the end do. We'll get there when we get there. But uh, that right now I know what these, these I'm, I'm explaining. Like, I'm like, there's a thief class. I'm like, no. So listen, they're the <laughs> like, she's explaining all this stuff to her. She's like, you're right. That's what they do. You're right. Is, but she loves that you can make all the stuff for it and all that. that that's the aspect. She, she's already beaten it. Like, okay. she'd beaten the final boss and everything. Um, She she loved it. She and still plays it. She's like, she's showing me all this stuff. She's like, I can't wait for you to get to, like, pick a job. And then eventually you'll get this job and all this other stuff. I'm like. Oh man, is this, that I'm all right. I might I might have been onto something getting you this one. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, it, it's weird. It's weird because like you know it's been a long time since you did clickbait, but also mm. 
you know, I met you in 2019 mm-hmm. and, you know, that that five years is a long ass time in kid time. Yeah. Right. So sure. like, yeah, like yeah, she, she was she, she was itty bitty or well, not. She was not itty bitty, but she was like, yeah. she was like four or five, something like that. She was kind of yeah. she was she would pick up the controller and play here and there and not. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, not. not the, I I did let let her um because I she she kept telling me how much she loved making all the guys and stuff like that. I was like oh well check this out this is what you can graduate to later on I showed her like WWE I was like look I made all of this <laughs> and she was like I want to do this can I do it and I was like yeah absolutely and she made Taylor Swift uh, <laughs> uh not really but you know yeah. she she made it but that, that uh, was her goal. That was her goal. It, yeah. it was, you know, it may not have been achieved, but God bless her. She tried. She like she. I, I was. I was like, this is this. You know, this is what it becomes. And I was like, yeah. So so I was like, okay. I, I, I you're you're like me. Got it. All right. We're <laughs> we're in there. Um. So yeah. Um. Today we went to an amusement park. Um. The local amusement park. I'll say. Um. It's biggin. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll just say what it is. It's see, I went to Cedar Point today. Um, it's a very popular, big, popular amusement park. Um, a bit, I grew up in the town that it is in, um, so I know Cedar Point pretty damn well. My mm-hmm. nostalgia for if anybody out there listening has been like, I've been there, like I grew up there. I've been there a lot, like because you, you like you live there. You're just like, well, there's nothing to do. And if you have a password, you're like, guess I'm just going to go there for like two or three days out of the week, because why not? And sure. Just walk around and people watch or whatever. Um, I felt old in ways that was were kind of fun, uh, <laughs> like just looking at younger people. I'm like, man. Y'all doing some, y'all y'all got it, y- y'all doing some shit. It's weird. Um, it's it's interesting. It's, yeah, it's, I yeah the the real young people are like like you know like the like the the like seniors into like early college. Yeah, are in because like the only the only like really window I have into being like seeing any of them is on TikTok. Yeah, and I'm like, God damn, why is everybody so gorgeous all of a sudden? Like right? everybody looks weird. like so like put together and and like. Like, you know, guys like their eyes are like they're all sparkly now, and I don't know it's, how they achieve wild. that. Maybe it's a, it's probably a filter, but it like might be. I don't. I'm really bad about like pick like parsing filters. Yeah. So like, I'm just like My, this is what these kids look like, and it's weird. Like you know, kids did not look this right. good when I was in they're, high they're, school. They're, they seem like they're doing great. You know, yeah. like I, I was just happy to like go there and see them doing like the same stuff that I was doing when I was that age or like people yeah. my age were doing when they were that. I was just like this, this, I don't know. There's something about this that feels good to me. Like when I see two dumbass kids walking with two dumbass girls and I'm like, yep, yeah, I remember that the awkward yeah. double not date it's well, not actually a date you're just there with two girls because your friend invited you this has happened to me plenty of times over yeah there. that definitely never happened to me oh, it's, um, oh it's, you, lucky it's weird and stupid um but <laughs> so, <laughs> so but yeah well, the, my favorite thing actually was so they always employ like a bunch of like people like that from colleges or whatever the mm-hmm. summer job or whatever but I would see like the one of their things because I remember I had plenty of friends that worked there. One of their big things was you can't have tattoos. Um, you, you can't, you know, you can't do anything out of. I, I seen so many workers there with like tattoos and like colored hair and all this stuff. I was like, mm-hmm. all right, we're moving on as a society. This is good to see. I'm happy about this because they were like yes. super strict about all that. Like you, none. Yeah. Um, I, you know, even. Um you know, like office work. Right. So like, right. I, I got my first office job in 2013 and it, I think it was, you know, keep them mostly covered. If, if yeah. you, you know, you don't have to wear long sleeves, like when it's like super hot or anything like that. But like, you know, if agents are going to come in or something like maybe right. cover up, but then, you know, af- after I took that break when, when mom died and I, and I came back, Right. You know, it was a lot more lax. And then the the pandemic really like freed stuff up oh, to where yeah. like, you know, like my, my current company, it's it's like, you know, there is a dress code. Right. But like it's like, yeah, no, piercings are fine, like colored That's hair so is fine, fine. like yeah. tattoos are fine. Yeah. And this is and this is a small Texas town right. where, where my, my current company is it is. Yeah. So it's like See, 
I would have expected it to be like way stricter. Right. Right. Yeah. Cedar Point was like always about like that really clean image. Like, yeah. In fact, I remember. So they do a thing during Halloween where like their big pitch to get you to work there was like, hey, none of that stuff matters because it's Halloween and it's supposed to be like weird and spooky. So that's OK now. And it's like, right. no, now it's OK. Always. I'm like, that's cool. I like yeah. that. Thank that's God. That's just how people are now. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. That, this is the world we live in. I was, now, it, hopefully, that was refreshing. I if I ever get why. to Japan, hopefully like. By the time that I get there, they relax the rules about tattoos at onsen because I'd really like to go to an onsen. But right. I am now like disqualified because yeah, of my my uh, wrist, yeah. my right. my forearm tattoo. Yeah, I, I yeah, it, the, it's a whole thing there. Their their society's wild in a lot of ways. Japan, there's there's yeah. there some years behind. We'll say yeah, um, but um, but yeah, that, I, you know, I rode some rides and stuff like that. I rode one I never rode before. My my, I t- we took my niece on my all time favorite ride that I've ro- ridden a lot of lot of times, and she was not a fan. Did not like that one at all. Uh, to be fair, it, you know it it. I get it. <laughs> I get it. It's 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 a lot for a nine year old child. Um, you, I've never you, been on like a real roller coaster. Yeah, and I, at this point, I probably shouldn't go on one. Oh, I am because of like am, all of my like health stuff. Yeah, it, that's probably fair. Um, I'm, I'm, I've been on them so many times that uh, like I'm immune. Like, sure. like the, the the butterfly thing that a lot of people get before they go on. I don't have it. Mm-hmm. It's gone. Yeah. Um, like I, I, I'm insane where like i'll just get on a like like a pretty you know good size roller i realized i was how nuts it is today when i when i was taking my niece on this thing just fucking no sell it like (laughs) it's her like first big this is the one that where she got scared and and you know she was like she was like all about riding everything and then she rode that one she's like maybe not everything (laughs) that immediately (laughs) backed her off which i thought was fun um like so I get I get on there and I'm like I'm like oh yeah just you know take my hat off I'm just holding it in my hand not because I don't need to hold on to anything what, who who does that that's I, but I'm not holding my hands up above me I'm just getting on like it's just a casual day just bored, yeah that's what just I'm saying it's, it's around. Like, you know your your demeanor on the roller coaster uh-huh. is like me anytime that I try to like tell a joke to you and you're just like nope. I'm yep. just, I'm just, just, I'm just, just sitting here. Yeah, just, just having a, you know, nice normal day. You know, no big deal. That's just how I'm, business as usual. And, yeah. and I, it's because I've done it so many times over the course of my sure. life. It, it, it's fun to know that it didn't quite go away. Like I thought maybe being away from it for as long as I have mm-hmm. would bring that back. I'd be like, oh, I, I might be a little scared, you know. But no, it's just like no. It's fine. I yeah. like wrote a brand new thing. Didn't even really know what it was or what to expect. And was like, yeah, who cares? Just keep, put the, put the stupid hat in the basket. Let's get on with this. Let's go. Um, this is one of those moments where I wish that we were a big enough podcast where you had people like doing animated clips. Because I would love to see like an animated clip of you on a roller coaster, just like completely deadpan there, with like everybody of, else screaming. I, I should have bought one of the pictures that they take uh, of those. Cause they're, they're, they're always dumb. You always look really stupid. That's the whole thing. I uh, like, I know we rode um, a ride called the Raptor. They always take it. They it's the most nineties roller coaster. I love it. And they never change anything about it, which is great. Like it's like bright green and the cars are like, part pink and like neon green and all mm-hmm. this like i'm like this is the most Some late claw 90s. marks yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah. it's, it's yeah. the most late 90s thing ever it's great <laughs> i love it and it's a really fun ride it always has been even when it first came out um it was like it was the, a huge deal when that thing came out i it's uh, that's like a point in my life that i remember pretty well um because i think i think i was a kid and we would just go there like two or three times out of the week because mm. why not um, but, um, yeah, they always take a picture and they have ever since it opened and they, I, I'm always kind of shocked that it's still open every time I go, I'm like, I'm shocked they're still doing it for this ride. Like it's nuts to me. Um, but here we are. And I, I'm looking at my picture. I'm like, it's funny because I'm like squinting and <laughs> like, I'm just because uh, I didn't have my glasses on. I'm just like, I'm just trying to see like, <laughs> that's, that's all it is. <laughs> but I'm kind of just laughing the entire time. I kept making fun of my brother-in-law because he sounds like an Italian when he's on roller coasters, which is like a, an Italian mobster. He just keeps going, oh, 
like oh, the entire time and i just i was like what are you what are you in the mafia now is this what's going on is i don't know um but yeah i also went to an arcade which was interesting um now and and so this is this is like a legacy arcade right it, you would have gone to this as a kid yes and they used to have games there right 100 percent. there used to be arcade games there used to be arcade games now it is you know the dave and buster's special as i'll mm-hmm. call it um and it's depressing now the, the i went to this specific arcade well we, we were like we're gonna go to the arcade and i was like please let's go to this one because this i there's something i need to look at because the last time i was there it was about i don't know it might have been uh like six years ago something six seven years ago i can't remember Mm-hmm. Um, it's been a while since I, since I last went, but the last time I was there, it had a random kind of half ass broken cabinet of Marvel versus Capcom. And I was like, I just want to go see if they still have it. I don't care if it broken works because it was like a, like a, one of the like ROM hacks like, or, or no, like, no, the, no, just, it, it, it didn't work. It, it worked, but like the sticks were bust, like the maintenance okay. on that it was of, just, yeah very poor like okay. the stick i, I think it's not, I remember it's not a right. rainbow edition of marvel versus no Capcom. no 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 I, you're yeah I, okay. let's specify you know the the maintenance on it was kind of beat up like i think i the whatever when i picked the character it was like holding a direction and i was like okay well this yeah. is a problem we'll see this but I money's think I gone won, <laughs> yeah well i want to match with like it so because the first one's pretty easy um it's the second one that gets you usually um on a fighting game arcade cabinet at least for me mm-hmm. um but um <laughs> yeah so <laughs> so i was like okay let's go see and they also had an a even more broken cabinet of i think like tekken three or something like that it was an older tekken um and i was like okay or was it tekken or soul, soul Calibur? one of the namco fighters um sure. and i was like okay oh i gotta go see if those are there and i get there and i'm like immediately like all that shit's gone that is that yeah, it's now man. like a mini it, golf thing and i was like oh man it's very strange to me and and it's not just those types of arcades, and it's not yeah. just the Dave and Buster's of the world. It it is any place that purports to be an arcade of any type, yeah, including barcades, where it feels that un- unless they're like very dialed into like a a particular like scene, like a fighting yes, game community, fighting games are gone. Yeah, like it's really weird because yeah. especially you know let, let's face it, like a barcade mm. is definitely catering to like the nostalgia, right? Mm. Uh, but it's weird that like the nostalgia seems to be early eighties, yes. right? Like it's like your Pac Mans and your Galagas and right. your Space Invaders, and then you might have like an NBA Jam or like a couple of the beat 'em ups from like the I, I the wish they had early to, to late nineties, yeah. and then it just kind of skips over to then you have you know you'll you'll have like probably a handful of like well you won't have the old light gun games it's right. it's the new light gun games like that aliens one and like terminator salvation like the those one more recent ones had there was a walking dead one oh you're um, right oh perfect yeah yeah exactly per- what i'm talking exactly. about yes and then and then <laughs> yep. it's all of the weird like mobile stuff turned into ticket games like yep, fruit ninja a, and shit like there that there was a sonic one um yeah there was a couple other weirdo ones yeah it, it was but like it was, whole massive swaths of like arcade history just vanishing yeah. from the arcade the, the only thing that was like resembling like an an, an an arcade of like any you know what we would recognize you and i um there was like a cruising uh game mm-hmm. Cru- i can't remember cruising usually, blast i want to say i see the mario kart cabinets quite often that one's usually there that one wasn't there it was just this cruising one and, and i was like that's the old, okay if that's the video game i'm gonna go play it i, mm-hmm. I, I remember because I was, I was like today's the podcast let's let's play this to see what goes on and i i got on i was like man this game sucks <laughs> uh, it, it was because like, that recent cruising game, right? It's like the, the most one in the recent last, cruising like, game, the, seven the or eight years. Steering wheel. It, it might have been because like it's an arcade, but man, the steering wheel felt so bad on it. Like yeah. I was like, no, this feels horrid, man. Like I, this, like maybe I just was always really good at them or something, but I was like, no, this feels terrible to play. Yeah. Um. They also had uh, what was the name? I can't remember the exact name of it, but it was a bike game. It was like a motorcycle game. They always, I always remember those from the old arcades where, like, because you can mm-hmm. lean them and they're cool. 
it, it was some kind of bike game that was an actual video game. I didn't get to play it because it was out. It was toward the front of the thing to make it look like it was, you know, the hip thing to do. But it was just always young girls kept going and sitting on the bikes. So I was like, I'm never going to get to play that goddamn game. So fuck it. Um, then I just went and wasted the rest of my money on because because you have to buy it in advance because it's a card. That's how this is how they get you. Yes, so even if you man. walk around and you go, I don't actually like anything here. I was, I was I got to that point. I was like, "Fuck! I don't actually like anything here. What am I gonna do?" <laughs> it's like, "Well, let's go waste it on some claw machines." So I yeah. tried to win a Pokemon for I don't know a little while. <laughs> I think there was one that straight up just didn't work. Like the claw was broken, and I was like, "Oh, there goes that whatever amount of money. Yeah. Fuck it. I don't even care. <laughs> it's it's whatever." When I went to Vegas, like back in 2012 with a friend Mm -hmm. who had been to Vegas before, like she was like, at that point, like the slot machines had been changed to where they no longer, the money didn't actually come out of the machines. Yeah. It was, it would just print out a voucher. Yeah. And she was like, the, this changes the entire vibe. Like, yeah. Because, you know, before, like you would hear the money clanking down and like you would hear people getting excited about it and it would, it would do something to your brain to where it's like you got excited. Right. And now it's like so silent. And I feel that way about, you know, no longer putting a quarter or a token into an arcade machine. Like there's something very tactile and satisfying about doing that. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I, uh, it's just the card swipe now. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it doesn't, it's not as good. It's not yeah. good. I don't like and it. And it, it probably saves on wear and tear on oh, the machine. Oh, it absolutely does. Yeah, yeah. it absolutely does. And and I'm not, I'm, if that's what we went to, like, but they still had video games, I'd be, I'd be, that'd be yeah, fine, it, you know? It, it's, it's something that I would miss, but yeah, yes, the, I would the, miss the more important thing is that it's missing, like, some arcade ass arcade games. Yeah, there's no, there's none of that anymore, and and it's, it, that's just the way of the world now. People have yeah. phones; they can play, you know, whatever on them, and and they, it's just, you know, you want to. It's more to get a prize, it, 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 like you want to win something for winning the game. Like that's yeah. that's kind of the hook, and and well, it, but it's also interesting because I have definitely seen like anniversary cabinets of like those old Namco games, oh, right? Yeah, Where for they, they sure. are new cabinets. Of these classic games, but it's weird that they don't do that for, again, like your Street Fighters or your Final yeah. Fights or your, you know, like that era of yeah. stuff. That arcade used to have a lot of the older, like more classic style, like Atari games and stuff like that. I, I know they had a Pac-Man. I remember mm-hmm. looking at it. Um, they th- Now they have some really big ass version of space invaders which was kind of fascinating that game i didn't is cool. get to play that one yeah, yeah. It, it looked pretty cool i was yeah. like I there's a version that. of galaga like that also that's a right. lot of fun yeah yeah that 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 looked pretty neat i am yeah. kind of meant to try it but i didn't um yeah I, I i then i was just like i guess i'll just try to win something for my niece and get rid of this money before they are done because <laughs> <laughs> i it's not gonna take long i have a feeling and uh i i did i managed to they have little tiny ass claw machines which are neat i was like this is fascinating and i won a little cheeseburger out of one hmm. and i was like that's i'll give this to them here's yes. this plastic cheese rubber cheeseburger you enjoy it and they were like, okay, thank you. And then they fed it to their stuffed snake that they had gotten. Amusement parks. <laughs> Ride the wave. Um, no, but it was fun. It, it, but at the same time, yeah, the, the, the uh, arcade. It was, I was just hoping they had that same broken cabinet. <laughs> I want to I, I wanna just go, hey, I live near here. Can I, can I buy it? I'll fix it. I want it. It's, it's, it's cool. Mm. Yeah. That is a that is a dark path to go down, my friend. I don't care, man. <laughs> I just want to save it from wherever it ended up. Yeah, and I think that's kind of what I was getting at is like, where did those machines go? That's I man, it, it, it sucks because in that place is so big, you can't just ask the person there. They definitely don't know. Oh no, <laughs> like they definitely don't know. Yeah. Like the kid working the counter looked like a nerd. And I like I bet I could have a fu- nice conversation with them about video games, but I can't ask them where like I, like I can't be like, listen, man, I, about six years ago, I came in here. And there was a Marvel versus Capcom cabinet back there. Do you know what they did with that? 
<laughs> Sorry, like, sir. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> sir, I need you to, uh, sir. I, I, if you're not, you know, buying a, 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 a weird card, uh, you need to leave. And I'm yeah. like, oh, you sure you don't know? It's fine. I'm not going to tell anybody. <laughs> I'm not going to rat you out. This will never come back on you. I just want to know what happened to it. It was so, broken already. You don't need it. I haven't I haven't been in a while, like actually since 2020. Like I, yeah. that was the last time that I – no, no, no. I went one other time because I, but I did see it change. But we have pinballs here, which is a pretty – at least right. the, in 2020, it was a really solid arcade. The, when I went again, I, it was probably like 2022. Mm -hmm. I think it was like when I was finally starting to try to get – like. Mm, yeah no it might have been 2021 because i remember going in there with gloves on yeah um and i was i was still wearing gloves at that point uh like it was starting to change into that homogenized version of arcades but yeah the older the, like when i used to go like the nice thing was that like all of the cabinets and, and pinball machines were actually for sale right uh and so there'd be like actually a rotating stock of stuff because right. they would they would sell the stuff they would buy new stuff and so you know if, if you if if you hadn't been there in a few months, you could go in and be like, "Oh yeah, there's this cabinet wasn't here last time. This right. this pinball machine is new, right?" Uh, and that was really neat. But I don't, you know, again now I think the last time I was like, "Oh, some of these some of these Dave and Buster games are in here now," and yeah. I don't know how I feel about this. And yeah. and they had also switched to the card system, which yeah, yeah, that's it's, fine. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, yeah, you're not gonna get away from that one. You're not. You're not. It's uh, it's, it's, it's it's that's that's tech now. And that's fine. Yeah. That that's fine. I don't. If I was again. filthy rich, I would I would open an authentic arcade. Like, yeah, that'd be fun. And and, yeah. and set it up more as like a kind of a museum type thing, right? Right. Like like the preservation of the games and have like techs on 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 the payroll that would be you know that would that'd actually be, maintain the stuff yeah that'd be fun um yeah. but yeah it'd be like no you everything's set to 25 cents you right. know you put a quarter in you know this is this is how it goes right uh like that type of thing and yeah but well with inflation yeah. maybe you up it to like more than that but who knows or or you just have tokens Token or to work. yeah well I, again my thing is filthy rich right so i'm not i'm not using this as like a money making oh okay operation. Yeah, you're this just is, you're this just more of doing a labor it for of fun yeah okay yeah. got it all right yeah. yeah all right okay then do whatever you feels right <laughs> exactly yeah um yeah because I, I i would like to see that preserved for yeah for younger people it's, right it's, like yeah. And, and, and yeah, it's and it should be dark and dank and 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 feel slightly dangerous. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, well, the Cedar Point ones. There's there used to be, a, man. I th this is what I do when I go go to that place. Is I ju I just walk around and go. This used to be here, and it's not here anymore. And I just, mm -hmm. <laughs> just go because that's the nostalgia I have. Is like I had it memorized what what, what was in every yeah. spot. I'm like. But now things are all different. So yeah. But the that are the arcade that I went in, that has always been there. That is an institution. It is not going anywhere because it's in the middle of the goddamn thing. Um and yeah, like so yeah, it's it's weird to go in there. Yeah. Um it, it but that one always has a specific feel because it's open. Like every you know, you have to be able to walk in. It's an amusement park. You just sure. want people to shuffle on through. Yeah. Very so different like, vibe from like from like an actual dedicated arcade. Yes. yes. And there and there's a but there are a couple of them in there. There at least there were. There there's one that used to be in a di a certain place that like you would walk in and it was a dank dark ass arcade, but it mm. was there, you know. They yeah. had a couple claw machines and some other shit. And that was it. And there was another one that had like kind of the same vibe. It was a little, maybe a little bit brighter, but not, not much. And, yeah. it, but those are gone. I'm pretty sure. My favorite oh. one was laser one at uh Westgate mall, which is not even a mall anymore. It's a shopping center, but yeah. it was the type of arcade. And it was, it was just like a small little strip right by one of the entrances. Yeah. It was, it was just, a, it was basically just like, like a straight hallway yeah. with cabinets on either side. And it was the type of place where when you would, when you would exit the arcade and go outside, like your eyes had to adjust because right. it, it was so dark in there. Yep. And the only illumination was from the cabinet screens. Like right. it was awesome. I loved yep. it. Yep. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, video games. Yeah. They're weird. They are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's been my pretty much my week. It's, it's okay. been it's been eventful <laughs> in other yeah. ways too, but yeah, we won't get into all that. Yeah, same here. I'm not gonna. Yeah. I'm not good. Things continue to be bad, and yeah. and like expenses continue to stack up in a way that's becoming very oppressive. But we're not gonna we're not gonna dwell on that.
The State Select is made possible through the support and funding of viewers like you. Here are our wonderful patrons. What we will do is thank some patrons, Justin. All right. That sounds like a thing we can do. Yes. We appreciate all of our patrons, but every week we like to uh, thank our executive producer tier. This week. Oh, and, and I should say. Yeah. Uh, we actually just recorded episode two of the Software Select as we're recording this. And it should be up as you're listening to this. That's kind of how that's the plan is that I'm hoping to get that like edited and put up and also the new poll for the next Suffer Select. We had uh, we had a r- pretty good conversation about old uh, Uriel's chasm. Yeah, it was that one was fun because like, you know, we really did. There wasn't really much to say about Panda Hero. There was a lot to say about Uriel's. There's chasm. a lot to say about this one. So, yes. yeah, um, definitely might want to check that one out. Um, absolutely yeah you're paying for it so well well, well if you're um, paying for it you if have, you're paying you for it yeah you, but i mean you should but, if but you're also not, yeah maybe just throw a three bucks in like for the month and just check it go. out and see what you think because yeah, yeah. It, it was it was it was it was an interesting discussion and that was an interesting game um it for sure was yeah so it definitely a lot to unpack with that one yeah uh-huh <laughs> um but uh, this week we have bookie we have Casey Curran. We have David Portnov. We have Dennis Robertson. We have Exrian. We have Matt Jorgensen. We have Philip P.K. Becker. We have Stephen Lobo. And we have Xavier Krager. But that that's not have... all. We no. have a new patron, Justin. Oh, hold on. I got the American Express card. Visa. I don't know if that applies to them, but you know what? I'm... No, no, that that well done. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you had it ready. Uh, at the ex, at the associate producer tier, we have Raymond Crum. Oh, so thank you very much. Welcome, um, Raymond. Another name that I don't recognize. So possibly you know someone that has just discovered us from the state select and not from our previous work. Well, great. Um, thank you so much. I tell actually you, had a tell your friends Ray. Yes, Raymond. I don't know what you prefer to go by. You could you can tell me it's fine or not, or I'll just keep guessing. That'll be fun. Yeah, one one of the guys in my nerd crew in high school, his last name was Crum, and I've never seen that name other than oh, him. Nice. So that was that was kind of cool. Nice. I, and I was like, wait, JC? I was like, no, no, because it's not JC. No, um, it's a different name. No, different, um, different guy. But yeah, uh, and you know, it, just reminder if if uh, you're thinking of joining the Patreon, you do get. Uh, the episode, the episodes two days early for all paid tiers. And then for the $3 and $5 tiers, you get access to all of our bonus content. Well, I should say for the $5 tier, you get access to all the bonus content, $3 tier. There, there will eventually be some stuff that is for the $5 tiers exclusively. Mm. Um, I, the main thing is that I have this like, uh, retail retrospective series that I want to do with friend of the show, John Golson. Right. Yeah. 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 And I want to do that where, it's available to the five dollar tier as they're coming out, and then once because it is a finite ep, like series, right? And then once they're all out, it'll be unlocked for uh, the three dollar tier. Right. Um, but it, it, he's very busy right now, so trying yeah. to yep, get absolutely that off the ground for sure. All righty. Well, I continued my search for something to 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 play. Dope. Uh, I. I and I really had this feeling, and the feeling was, I was like, I want to have that feeling of like starting out on a quest where like I'm just like a low, like a start, like a level one character, like 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 almost like an MMO, right? Like kind of jumping into a world and like not having much, and then starting from there. And I kept coming back. I was like, man, I wish the Champions of Norath. Um, and the sequel was available on modern consoles because mm. those were like some really awesome action RPGs on the PS2 based on um, EverQuest. Right. And I think that's the problem is that like at, they were Sony used to own EverQuest and that's mm-hmm. where, where those games were made. Sony no longer owns EverQuest. And so I have no idea what that would entail for Champions of Norath ever oh, coming yeah. forward. I, I own them on PlayStation 2, but I was like, I don't want to I don't want to sit in front of the PS2 right now, though. Like, well, yeah. I, there is something that I'm going to be doing for that for uh, games my mom found, which I actually need to start oh, playing that. Well, there you go. Um, but, you know, I, I was like, no, but but something like that. And I was like, V Rising came out. And that's one that I had been looking at. Yeah. And it was cheap enough where I was like, you know what? 
I've heard good things about this. <laughs> it, it's a it's a low price point. This might scratch the itch that I'm looking for. So so let uh, let's jump in. And so I, I picked up V Rising for PS5. And for people who don't know, it it is a it is a vampire based, um, like. ARPG. So yeah. this is, this is what it, one of the things I find fascinating about how the the console and PC markets have merged. Right. Right? Because you know, in the console space growing up, action RPGs were games where you level up but you were actually pressing a, the attack button. You're not doing a turn-based thing. True. Right? Yeah. But ARPG ARPG which is also action RPG in the PC front is Diablo, right? Like, like when you're talking right. about an ARPG in PC terms, that is what you're talking about. So right. you're talking about like, you know, Titan Quest or um, uh, Path of Exile or right, 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 Torch right, right. Torchlight. You know, those types of games, yeah, right? Different kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, and that and that's what V Rising is. But it has it also has a survival mechanic to it. Yes. So you are like harvesting materials to build things. You, you're crafting armor and weapons. Yeah, it has like a base building element to it. Yes. Yeah. It, and also it's interesting because you don't actually level like you don't get experience points for fighting enemies. Your level is based on your gear score. So it's almost like like destiny in that respect. So the way to actually get stronger is to craft better gear. Right. Uh, and, and part of that is like, you know, you have to fight bosses to get access to the recipes to then craft even better gear and, and so on. So that's kind of the core loop. Right. Um, it's pretty cool because they really took like the vampireness of it to like, like they really play with that. Right. And it's one of, it's one of those games where it's like they couldn't have made this like 10 years ago. Yeah. Because the, the day night cycle. Like it is very dangerous to be outdoors in the daylight as it should be right, for a vampire right, right. game. Yeah. But the the lighting is so good and so precise that it's one of those things where it's like if you're moving from shadow to shadow in like, you know, under the trees and stuff like that. Yeah. You can get from point A to point B because you have, you know, like you can be in the sunlight for a little bit before it starts like whittling your health away. But it, but once it hits that threshold, you will die very quickly. Right. But it's really neat where it's like, oh, you know. I, this canopy of trees is going to give me just enough cover, even when you're like you're harvesting stuff, right? So it's like, right, position. I'll position myself around this rock here because there's just enough shade where I can pound on this rock to like you know get the these minerals and stuff right. like that. Uh, and and it's and also you know as the sun shifts throughout the day, those shadows change, right? right. So it, it's really well done. That's cool. Um, yeah. And also, you know, obviously you can feed, right? But Feeding does not replenish your your hit points, but what feeding does is it fills this blood meter, and it's actually this weird like class changing system, which I didn't actually understand until I watched a review of the game okay. after the fact, where different enemies and different creatures have different classifications of blood, and so those will change your class, right? So like, okay, if you feed on a on a miner like a worker, you will actually get like a a slight buff to your gathering and there and everybody has like a certain quality percentage oh, of their blood okay got you. so yeah. like a worker that has like a two percent thing is going to give you like a very small buff a worker that has like a 37 percent quality of blood is going to give you a much higher buff to that I gathering's see. trait right and so if you then go you know feed on a thief with like really good quality blood you're going to get like you know, higher crit levels, you know, faster, okay. better evasion, better that's, speed to your attacks. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It's pretty neat. Like it, it's yeah. a, it's a surprisingly deep system that I don't think they explain very well. Cause I, that went over my head, that's, like in the that's tutorials. The indie way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but like a survival game, like other survival games that I've played, it's pretty loose on narrative and, yeah like objective where right. you get to a point where it's like and i got to this point where i was like well i i need i have this like this uh machine that is grinding stone into um brick right uh -huh. but it's taking a long time but i need a fuck ton of brick to do this next objective and so i'm just kind of sitting there waiting for this thing to do its job and, and right. it's like you know i need like 10 brick for each wall that I need to build and I need mm -hmm. to make a room 
in order to like get the next like threshold and it's like just sitting around because it, it makes them one at a time and i'm like yep just kind of sitting there look at my watch and i'm like i could go out and get other stuff but i don't really know what i need right now right and there's also there are like you know boss targets where they have like v blood and it's weird because they actually do regenerate like they, they repopulate so you can go kind of farm them if you want but the first time that you kill one of them you're going to get a bunch of like new recipes new gear new spells that type of stuff yeah um and they're they're kind of tricky uh fights like right this is not diablo 3 this is not like a game where you can just kind of like you know mindlessly click you know to victory right uh and actually my biggest complaint about the game is that the main attack is on r2 and uh, you can't weird. change it. it and it, it feels bad i don't like that huh so like, yeah. i don't know why they couldn't just make it like on the face buttons it, it's a bizarre setup um because dark souls yo but it's not even that but because it's only Dang, the one right. it's only one it's attack only the one attack <laughs> right yeah. yeah yeah so i don't i don't i really don't get the mentality behind it although it is also like a like a Diablo where it's like you can just hold the button down, right? Oh, so okay. you'll just you'll just keep attacking, which that's okay. what I started to do. Because like I don't want to I don't want to wear out this trigger on this game. Um, but ultimately I got to that point where I was like I felt like I was just waiting around, and I am yeah. I am so shit at like design, Justin. Oh yeah, like I just don't have that ability. So like when in all of these survival games when they're like oh yeah so build a base and I'm like. I always end up building like the bare minimum of what I'm required to do. And there's no real thought into like the right. throughput. Like my, I will say that my second base that I made in Subnautica did have like some pretty decent, like I was like, okay, in this hallway here, here's my material lockers, you know, yeah. here's, here's my, my base ingredient lockers, like that type of, I actually did organize it yeah. pretty well. I've, I've gotten into it in fallout four, mm -hmm. like where I, where I'm like, I think Fallout 4 makes it entertaining for me because they'll they'll kind of present you with like an area and it's kind of a, usually a smaller area not all the time but like mm -hmm. it's it's kind of like okay build within these confines there's a bunch of houses and stuff like that and sometimes you can just go ah it's fine like just leave it like that and it and it is fine yeah. But I, I, also you can be like but what if I just like randomly connect all these roofs and stuff like that and you're like That'd be, that, that's kind of cool. Does it matter? Mm. Not really, but it's it's some uh, that and that's the weird thing yeah. that I get into, yeah. right? Where like you know, because Subnautica has a bunch of Subnautica is, is the survival game I've played the most, right? And it's got like a bunch of stuff where it's like here's these beds and here's this office chair and all of this stuff, and I'm like, but there's no sleep mechanic, yeah, and like there's no reason for my character to sit right. in this office chair, and that's kind of the thing where where and I guess I don't have this ability to kind of role play that deeply. Make, I do like your, to role play in fun. my games, yeah, but like so you know my friend Shanna, right? We're in the same uh, free company in Final Fantasy fourteen, and we mm -hmm. did get a free company house, and she is she is in charge uh, of furnishing the house. She yeah. loves it. She she's constantly working on it, and I'm like. But I like I don't I don't I hardly go there because I'm like, OK, yeah, I, I can sit in this like little we have we have like this weird like strip like like a like lap dance area where it, where it looks like a strip club where it's like a little okay. bitty booth with like a like a stripper pole okay. like table yeah, yeah. in the middle. Yep. And it's like, yeah, I, I can sit I can sit in this booth. But like. I'm not sitting there, right? Yeah. My character's sitting there and it's like to what end? And it's like. You know, and, and because like 14 has like all these flight, like food things that you can put out to make it look like a bar or like yeah. a, like a, like a dinner table and stuff like that. It's like, mm -hmm. but, but why, you know, and, and it's like, that's my thing. Right. And, yeah. you know, I have seen some really awesome looking castles oh, from V some rising. Pe some people really do some cool shit with yeah. a lot and, of And it games. looks yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to do it. Um, yeah, it's I just don't have the imagination for it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of patience. Um, mm -hmm. my, my my actual favorite like Fallout Four mod was um one that built all the bases for you, mm. um, and all you had to do was d deliver um uh the resources that it right. that they needed. Kind of select would, from a template, and it was slow. I don't even know if you selected. It was just kind of like whatever. I can't mm. remember what the hell that name the name of that mod was called. It was really I think it was like Sim Settlements. Yeah, uh -huh. it was Sim Settlements. 
um, you would basically just, you know, all right, you have this settlement now. Um, if you put them in the resources into the machine, we can expand the city. Yeah. And it would just automatically do it and it would slowly build over time. And it was like, it was really, it, and they were really cool looking too. Um, yeah. That, that was a and, neat mod. And it, it's weird, right? Because I love the base building in like the Suikoden games. Right. And maybe that's what I need is like more of a narrative hook to do it. Right. Yeah. Like if my castle gets to this threshold, more people move in. Right. Well, and the the other thing about the, well, the Sukaden games, it's already kind of built. It's just a, it's just a matter of getting, you know, it the, is. Requ- the one requirement, you know, yeah. which is but, kind like, of but similar I would be to ex- Fallout. But I think I would be excited if you could actually if in a Sukaden game or like in I didn't I know it doesn't work like this in mm-hmm. Chronicles, but like if you were actually building your base the way that you wanted to build it, but right. doing so was also the way that you recruited certain party me- or certain mm-hmm. people for your base and stuff like that. Right. I'm also thinking like maybe in a porn game, like that would be a really good incentive too, right? Like, you know, you have you have to have like this really plush living room, you know, for like someone to move in or something like mm-hmm. that. But there there has to be some sort of hook other than just build it for the sake of building it. And I think that's where I run into the issue, right? Like Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that I, that's tough. It's yeah. tough to keep going with that. Yeah. Yeah. I, and, and you know, there there's definitely ba- there's definitely functionality to the castle because there's obviously that's how you're going to you know you right. need to have like certain machines or or things built in order to build better or craft better gear and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Uh, eventually you can actually have like uh prisoners that that are basically like, you know, livestock for you to to feed right, on right, or right. I think you can actually like glamour like workers to like do stuff for okay. you, right? Uh again, leaning into that vampire thing. So there is neat stuff there, but like yeah. You know, eventually I was just like, I just got kind of bored with like the waiting around and like the next like boss character was like, I went to go fight them. I was like, oh, this isn't going to go well because they were they're like a necromancer. and They were just like throwing tons and tons of skeletons at me. And I was right. like, and they were doing a ton of damage. And I was like, I think I kind of have to over gear to take this one down. And so I just felt a little bit stuck and, and kind of like I didn't want to go forward with it. And so that's kind of where I. That's often D-Rising. where I run into with any sort of survival mechanic where I just, yeah, yeah, or, well, well, base building or, or what, uh, there's a lot of stuff like that where, where you get to a point and you're just like, I don't actually want to go do the next thing and that, but you know, or you'll start building towards it and you're just like, man, that's, it's going to take a little while to do this, isn't it? Yeah. And, just and there's not a lot of other stuff out. to do, but, but also I think a big thing for me, and I've talked about this with you before uh, with these survival games is. I need I I need a thicker narrative hook, right? Mm-hmm. Like I need I need characters to interact with and like and like a compelling story to kind of propel me forward. And Subnautica almost gets there, but th- it's just loosey goosey enough to where there's a there's large swaths of that game where it's like, uh, okay, what what now? Like what what next? Julian, you know, I, I I'm going to ask this. Do, have you ever considered like a farming game, like just trying one, like uh, like I've, especially especially um uh Stardew Valley? I tr- so Xrian actually gifted both of us Stardew Valley right. on Switch, and I played it a little bit, but it was on the Switch. Yeah, and maybe I need to like, I think I think I I think it's on or it was on Game Pass. I might have tried it there. Yeah. Yeah, and I and I did play like Harvest Moon back in the day, but Harvest right. Moon, you know, again, it was more about like. You know, I, the, I just think the farm. I think the like their biggest problem um, in Stardew Valley is it takes like a, f- a, a f- lo- almost like an in-game week to kind of start to like get the gears rolling mm-hmm. to, for it to like start to click. Yeah. Um, but like once it does it, it, it that that ball will keep rolling. And it, 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 yeah. And I've it, heard like wild. people get like real attached to like the characters. The, and, and that's, the narrative that's what that I mean. One. There's like yeah. a narrative hook and stuff like that. It, like there, it's it there that might be more because yeah. He, and uh, and also numbers go up a lot. And then you're, yeah, you're like the starting to you're starting to sit there and like plan efficiency for how things go. And mm-hmm. like you're like, but what if I had all, all this stuff get watered automatically? Then I could save all this time. Yeah. Oh man, like like it's like I I it might be, but it might also flop too. It's hard to say, you know. Yeah. Um, and I know I've talked about it a lot, but it's it's because it's like one of my favorite games that I've played this year. But like, there's aspects of that in that a struggle with sin game mm-hmm. where like there's uh, at, at a certain point you get like uh you're you're 
you're kind of working for this uh, half orc tribe and you can kind of like have them go do stuff for like for the tribe to like get resources and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And you kind of decide what they're doing. And then there's also the farm that you can work on, which is satisfying. And, and there are bits of that where it's like, oh, you know, and again, you know, with like characters that I give a shit about and, yeah. and like also the rewards being stuff that's like, oh, well, if I if I do this, then, you know, I'm going to have access to this, which is going to be cool. You know, yeah, like it, it, it does do a good job of showing you kind of like where you can start to go with things. And mm-hmm. like, and, and yeah. you're like, oh, I would like yeah. to go. How, where do I find that stuff? And then you find one thing. And you're like, oh, this is where I find it. OK, all right. Yeah. And it's kind of off to the races. It's, yeah. It's like, like there's a part there's a part in that game where like you start training up your own militia. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, one of one of the characters, she's like the captain of the guard, but the, but all the guard gets killed. And mm-hmm. so you put her in charge of training your troops and right. they level up. And then like you, you can also like there's another quest where you can start to arm them with better gear. And then you start to like position them in different parts of the map. And right. so they're protecting the place and you're getting paid for them to do that. And you pay their salary. Like it's a really cool thing. And then, of course, the porn game. So like, you know. Like you have a party at the camp and then like shenanigans happen and, of course, you know, yeah. like you have you have like a more motivated training regiment with that guard uh, for the for that the men. Sense. Right. Yeah. Like uh, it's but it's cool. Like and yeah. it's one of those things where it's like I could see this fleshing out even more. And like this, like this could be this this could be a really cool thing. And yeah. Right. So but that's the thing is, right. There, there's a lot of like hooks there to kind of keep me going. So, yeah, right. may, maybe I need to like look at. Yeah. Uh, try, start maybe again. try that one out. I don't know. Yeah um yeah uh but what ended up happening justin and what ended up ultimately scratching the itch okay was i just random because you know so so the the expansion came out for final fantasy 14 ah, uh yes. and la- as i said last episode you know we're nowhere close to getting to do the expansion stuff because like mm. there's a there's a lot of stuff between then but you know i was like well there's other stuff that i've been meaning to do and like nothing else is really like like working for me and and i i should also say is that like with this ongoing stuff with my with my job where i'm just kind of like just just sitting here like just anxious and stuff like that like this was a thing where it's like i need so- i need something where i can just be like position the target in the center pull the switch position the target in the center pull right. the switch right um that's a that's an evangelion reference for y'all yeah uh but there, there so there was stuff you know there's like uh I was like, well, let me go fit. Well, I'll, I'll save that. The main thing that I ended up doing was continuing to work through Eureka, which was the way to get your relic weapons and armor for the Stormblood expansion that the Final Fantasy 14 community fucking hated because it was built around a lot of the mechanics and philosophies of Final Fantasy 11. <laughs> oh. So it, it's like you really should be in a party. Mm. Um you know, fighting things that are more than like, you know, two or three levels ahead of you are going to fuck your shit up, especially yeah. when it first rolled out. The 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 level design is purposefully obtuse. Hmm. Um and also if you like once you get past I think like level ten, if you die, you lose experience and you will de level, which is a hallmark of Final Fantasy Eleven. Okay, right. So it yeah. it was intended to be harsh right and and 11 players were like oh man this is so fun and nostalgic and 14 players were like what the fuck is this <laughs> right <laughs> and it's it's been nerfed repeatedly like oh, since, since it. it came out and my thing is that like i don't really care about getting the weapon done but there is a set of armor for my dragoon mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that is like some of the coolest armor in the game but in order to get there i have to complete the relic weapon and to do that i have to go through all four of these areas and it's a lot right Right. But it's also a lot of mindless position the target in the sw- center and pull the switch. Well, there you go. And and my friend Shanna was like wanting to do it as well just to do it. Mm-hmm. And so we've we've kind of gotten together and just done it cuz like it's definitely faster with two people. You can solo it for na- like definitely now. Right. You have to be careful about, you know, picking your targets, but um but yeah, so that had uh, has actually been like a really nice like kind of mindless grind to to mm. take my mind off of a lot of shit. Um, and it feels like I'm, I'm making progress on that and like, I'm, I'm almost done. Mm, yeah. Excuse me. I'm almost done with the second phase of, of the weapon. Uh, and we're almost, I'm almost to like the level cap for that second area. So I'm almost halfway through with this whole thing. Yeah. 
All but right. then at the same time, one of the things that I'd done ages ago is I was like making a concerted effort to go back and polish off like all of the side quests and like raid content in order because mm-hmm. it gets really weird in Final Fantasy 14 if you start to unlock stuff and just do it willy nilly and it's like all of a sudden you're like you're talking to Sid in Stormblood. But then you go back and talk to Sid in Heaven's Ward, and he looks – he's got a different outfit on, and, it, and it's, it's a weird, like, cogn- like a narrative dissonance for me where it's like I, I like to have it in chronological order because it messes with my head otherwise. Yeah, okay. Um, so I had, I had finished all of the Heaven's Ward stuff, and I was working on Stormblood. So, like, right before the expansion came out, I finally finished, like, the uh, – like, the boss raid series of that, which finished off Stormblood for me. So I was like, okay. Now I can go do Shadowbringers. Right. I'd already had done the I'd already done the first near raid in Shadowbringers and the first boss raid of, of Shadowbringers, but okay. I had other stuff to unlock. And I, I completed all of the near content. Oh, you completed it all, huh? I completed yeah. it all. And all right. man, they sure did do a great job of replicating the near automata experience in Final <laughs> Fantasy 14 for <laughs> Justin. Yeah. Meaning that I was fucking annoyed for the entirety it. of it because yeah. it's like it's like okay come over here and talk to this guy and then walk over to this empty area and go through here and get a thing and then come all the way back and talk to this guy and then go I back to where you just were that, yeah. and go find this and and this they're extra egregious for for I this believe and it. i and i know yoko taro had a hand in this and i uh-huh. i i I 100% blame him for this. Yeah. There are multiple quests where all what you have to do is go back into the raid dungeons uh-huh. with no enemies, nothing to do other than just walk through these now empty areas just oh, yeah, to find him. one thing. Yep, that's him. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, that's them. Yeah, that's, fuck they, Yoko they Taro. <laughs> <laughs> they love that, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, and, you know, and then also, like, 2B and 9S show up and I'm like I fucking hate both of you so much and they're and they're actually not in the story as much as you would think they are it yeah, actually they're, revolves no, they're around not. it revolves around these two dwarves um because in Shadowbringers yes. they're, they're Lalafels but in Shadowbringers you're in a different you're an alternate reality and so all of the races are different names yeah um and they 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 wear helmets that make them look like the dwarves from Final Fantasy 4 which is a nice touch right um and their story is actually pretty good like mm-hmm. that that had me care a couple times and I would have cared a lot more if it wasn't for the very obvious, like, you know, and, and th- I think this is part Yoko Taro, part MMO where it's like, just, I'm just going back and forth between yeah. these like three people. And yeah, I, that's kind of it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, you know, like the raids themselves, like they, they do a, an excellent job of like recreating like a lot of near mechanics. Yes. Um, but then there's places like the second. So the second, raid dungeon the puppets bunker i got through that rel- i think i only died once that one like the mechanics made sense to me like i got through relatively unscathed fuck the last one i died probably like 10 or 15 times in there and yeah. like and just stuff where i was like i don't actually know i don't i i cannot parse what's going on here right uh which has been my ongoing complaint about final fantasy 14 is that the, they keep introducing new mechanics that are tougher and 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 you know you, you the the punishment for getting hit by them gets like stricter and stricter. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I don't know what I was supposed to do there. And now I'm dead. And, yeah. you know, thankfully, you know, in a raid situation, there's what, like 12, no, 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 like six healers that can, that can potentially raise you. So right, right, it, it's right. all right. But, uh, I definitely felt like shit by the end of that, like final raid. And then the, and there was so much more quest in you know involved in like finishing that shit off um and then and then 2b was like me and 9s can't stay in your world any longer because of this and i'm like good get the fuck out is go it, away is it 2b and 9s or is it like it, the no, white 2b no uh, no no. so that's a different character that's a different character yeah it it's slight spoilers but but yeah you, yeah so at first you're like oh it, it's a different you know your member yeah, but then, but but then you end up encountering because actually nine S is the final boss of the first raid, and right. then I do, and then two B shows up, and you realize that like you've been working for the wrong people, and uh-huh. it's a it's a whole thing. Yeah. I actually thought they were going to go for like a like a retread of Adam and Eve, but they don't do that. They don't do that, no. Uh, but yeah, I was glad to have that in my 
And the cool thing is that, like, I also don't like the gear. So, like, there's no reason yeah, for me no, to ever it, do yeah, these you, you, again. Yeah, the the, the near games are just not for you. They are, they are not, not your, for me. Not your no. speed at all. No, um, I, I know. <laughs> it, it, it's funny because, like, Weston just uh, from Big Nerd Gaming, he's been playing near Automata, and he's over the moon for it, as everybody yeah. is. And it's I'm like, you know, it'll be – he'll come on – like, because he, he's going to come – I, I want to have him on again hopefully soon. Absolutely. Uh, and he'll probably talk about that, and I, and I will respectfully I, listen. I, and I just like, – I just bought those games on PC. So I re- yeah, I like, remember. Why not? Um, I'm gonna own them. Music's good. It's great. Yeah, I love I love the the 14 uh, music uh, for those raids. Like mm-hmm. the the boss themes are great. Yeah, um, they're the the I think it's the second raid, the the one where where it's like made of all the other ones. You know which one? I'm, it makes a big, big lady. Oh, There's yes, a big yes. lady. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that theme is fucking awesome. Yeah, <laughs> that was actually a really fun raid because there was somebody in one of because you're you're in three parties in okay. There's three. It's a three party alliance for for the the massive alliance raids. All right, and someone was in shout speak saying like, Yoko Taro presents the ball of women, and, and then and then we beat that part. It's like Yoko Taro presents. The big woman made of many women. Yes, made <laughs> of like, many women. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, so that, that that was fun. But uh, yeah, glad glad to have that in the rear view. And so now yeah. I just have to finish like the the boss raid series for Shadowbringers, and then I can start into Endwalker. Um okay. and I am excited for the Endwalker stuff because um I forget what the what the raid series is. But the boss raids are all based around Final Fantasy IV, like like the elementals. Oh, that there you go. Yeah, so that that's like a, that's up your alley. That's yeah. definitely up my alley. Yeah. yeah, like I think you actually like are rolling around with gold bez for part of it. Like, oh okay, yeah, that that is my shit. So yeah, that's your shit. And also, you know, I think all of the gear from that stuff is like the Final Fantasy IV versions of stuff. So like, mm. if I can get Cecil's Dark Knight armor for my Dark Knight, like that'll be dope. Right. Uh, and also Kane's Dragoon armor, because Dragoon is my main. Like, there you go. Uh, that'll be very fun. That'd be good. Uh, but, yeah. I th- oh, and I guess the one last thing I wanted to say really quick, because okay. I've, I've seen this recently. You know, so Dawn Trail came out, and it ha- it has mixed reviews on Steam from, like, the, the users. Mm-hmm. And I've seen so many takes already of, like, is this the beginning of the downfall for Final Fantasy fourteen? Yeah. And I'm like... It's the first time the series has had mixed reviews, guys. Like, yeah. oh, slow your roll. Like, it's the beginning of a whole new story arc. It was intended to bring, you know, scale things way back down right, after, right, right. like, you know, a couple really, like, world-ending event halting expansions. Like, yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's, you know, like, but the, the doom and gloom is, like, so crazy to me. And it's like... That's a, that. That's the amount of benefit of the doubt that, that this team gets from from its users, huh? Like yeah. after ten years of like just like best in class like gameplay and storytelling mm. and world building, it's like one one thing that's like semi mid, and they're like, oh, it's over. Oh no, <laughs> like, God that's damn the it. MMO community. It, it is. Seems I hate like. it and then, so much, it, dude. And then, they, then they're like, We're, we'll go play this other game. This one's not good anymore. And then, well, and the other thing is, is like, right. So you, you wait years for an expansion and yeah. then, and then it's like, literally I saw a video today. It's like, well, what do you do now? You finished everything. And it's yeah. like, it's been out for a fucking week, dude. Like right. technically a week and a half. If you count early access, and right. it's like you go touch grass or you go play something else. Like yeah. if you've done everything in an MMORPG yeah. and there's nothing left for you to do and you're you're complaining about there not being anything to do you need to seriously evaluate your that's, life yeah that's... and i and i have no life i'm just saying that right. like there's other games that you can enjoy right there's yeah. other hobbies that you can have like you don't have to like complain about like a game that's ostensibly not supposed to run out of content because you're supposed to engage with it yeah. in a slow and steady pace yeah for the most part that's why things release the way they do a lot of the yeah. time in there and like even even like act really active ones will be like ah here's the thing for this week that you can go and do and it'll usually yeah. it'll be like a small thing you know just and, and the stuff is, is grindy on purpose because yeah. they, they expect you to you know like keep coming back to it right. week after week or month after month and yeah you know not not power through it in two days no 
no, they don't. Ex- they don't think that's what you're going to do. They, they, I'm sure they know people will do that. Oh, they do. Yeah, absolutely, but, they do. You know, they, but, they, and you know, Yoshi P has said on multiple occasions, like, no, like, co- you know, come in, do the new stuff, and leave. Like, yeah, you know, go go enjoy other things. Like, we will be here. You know, there will be new stuff, and when you come back, like, there will be there'll this be, and this, and blah, be blah, this yeah. and there will be more new stuff. Yeah. yeah, that's how it works. But you yeah. know, people, people are finicky. Uh, MMO players have no chill. No, they do not. No, that's why uh, I stay the hell away from that genre mostly. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, I, yeah. I don't. It's have funny the- too, because because like you know, as much success as fourteen has had, like Square continues to be their worst, their own worst enemy. Like yeah. you know, there were multiple people in like our Discord who were like, "How do I buy this game?" And it's like that's that's actually the the trickiest part of the whole thing. Mm. Like you know um yeah it's 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 rough uh what what game were they trying to buy just 14 Final 14 okay yeah. yeah weird okay yeah matt jorgensen had like he, he bought a physical version at some point and it's con but he doesn't have the disc anymore and it's constantly wanting the disc but like he oh, can't boy. just go rebuy the game digitally and it's like Great. i don't know why he can't do because i've done that before like at a certain point i think i bought i found I bought the digital one on sale because like I don't want to mess with the discs anymore. And I get it. And they no longer release discs for them. They ha- they didn't do yeah. one for Endwalker or Dawn Trail, right? Uh, and so yeah, and now it's just on my hard drive. But like, and so it never asked me for the disc anymore. But I don't know why right. it's doing that for him. But it's not just him. There's other. There's f- plenty of other people who like they they'll do the free trial. And they're like, okay, I'm sold. Let me. H- how do I buy the game? And it, and it it's harder than you think. I believe it. <laughs> I believe it. Yeah. Oh man. All right. Well, that's all right. that's that's all. That's it for me. That's it. Yeah. That's I. I ain't got much this week. Yeah. I, I apologize. It's a. It's a bit bitless. Um. I apologize. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Um. It's I, been I, a, I, again. It's been a week, and it's been a especially busy day. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have that. Yeah. Um. Yeah, have to see what because like so once once everything gets squared away at work and and I'm I'm back actually working, uh, yeah, that's gonna be interesting because I know we're approved for overtime and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be working as much as they probably let me and that's gonna definitely you know impact a lot of stuff as far as yeah, like gameplay go. time but also podcasting time so you know we'll we'll see what happens I need to yep. I need to I I've I've been really lazy about it. I, I I banked a bunch of bits. But I've been really lax on on the 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 political ads, and I really need uh, to like yeah. get those like done like in uh, like a nice big batch. We're almost because we're almost done with like right. You, we've covered almost everyone at this point, and then you know we need to start. We need to have like the the debates so we can whittle this list down to the two, and then finish this sucker out. Yeah. Yep. Um. I think I think the thing is like nobody seems to really care about it except for me. So like like there's You're, not a lot of hey yeah, there's not a lot no, of buzz people, about it. I'm sure people care. Um, I never get anybody like saying anything about the ads or anything like that, or or like you know. Well, they're like, they're paying attention. You know, they're taking it very seriously. Maybe, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, yeah, I really liked. So Mike Fallock did our our ad for Mario, and yeah. that was great. Uh, because I I was like, okay, so I want you to start doing like the bullshit like Charles Martin A voice, but then like clear your throat and then just sound like a Brooklyn guy. Yeah, that'd like, be good. Yeah, yeah. and I can't, he did it. He nailed it. It was awesome. That's good. That's great. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Well, one last thing before we take off, Justin. All right. Uh, we have questions, comments, and concerns. Right. Uh, as always, there's multiple ways that you can uh, send in a question, comment, or concern. Uh, you can email us. The email address is thestateselectpod at gmail.com. You can DM us on Twitter at statesselectpod. Uh, there is a uh, tab in our Discord uh, where you can throw stuff in. Uh, that's the, the link for that is in the link tree in the show notes. You can also comment on the Patreon um, or I guess also the YouTube version of it. Like that's also another place where you can comment. Multiple ways where you can throw a question, comment or concern. And mm. we will read them on this here podcast. Um, this is an email that comes to us from Casey Curran who says, What's a fake game in a movie slash show slash game that you would want to play? 
My choices are the 2D side scroller Escape from Death Row from The Simpsons, the side scroller slash RPG Journey to the Center of Hawkthorn from Community, and the open world Pro Pain <laughs> from King of the Hill. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, I get it. Um, oh boy, my mine is super boring, but but it's it's 100 the one that that I'm the most fascinated to play, which is the Oasis from Ready Player One. Okay. Like yeah, that's fair. You know, especially with the omnidirectional uh uh treadmill, like that whole thing. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I'm 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 really big on the potential of VR and the Oasis is kind of like that, f- you know, really like the ultimate expression of it. Mm-hmm. Uh and, and that's definitely what I would want to mess with. Um man, I, I don't know if I've ever had one of these that actually appeals to me i'm sure there's one right that that actually does um oh yeah video verse had that feudal fantasy game that seemed hilarious um mm-hmm. um or was, or or even just the console from from video verse right yeah, like that thing is pre- so that weird thing and unique. pretty cool yeah, yeah that thing was pretty cool for sure um there's there was also well, I, I guess you get you kind of uh, that's kind of the entire game. It's not actually it's it's a weird thing. Um, there, the the one that always sticks in my head that I've always remembered is um uh, from the show regular show. There was they they had one where they played a game. It was called Dig Champs, and they they start the game up, and it's it, uh, the part that sticks in my head is always da 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 dig champs and that that i just had that stuck in my head forever mm-hmm. it's it'll never leave um the game it, it, then they've argued about who is going to be the 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 player one or player two because they didn't want to be i can't remember it was the whole thing um i don't know why i remember that but i do but yeah probably eh, video verse there's probably more that i can't remember off the top of my head i don't watch a lot of stuff so true yeah close second and it's actually pretty similar to uh the oasis but more fantasy style is the world from dot hack sign the anime like oh yeah that version of the world because obviously you know you get to explore it a lot in the video game on ps2 Mm -hmm. but the way that the world is depicted in dot hack sign where it's like you know the the level of emote that they have and and you know they really have the freedom to do kind of whatever they want you know right like that that is very cool to me and i've always wanted that level of fidelity in right. like an online like a virtual like mmo like mm-hmm. that that would be very cool yeah especially if the music from dot hack sign is always playing god damn <laughs> soundtrack is so fucking good <laughs> i'll have to look into that sometime i think hell I've heard yeah a few tracks it's you would good. love the soundtrack for dot yeah, hack sign yeah, i feel like i've looked into a couple tracks or, or at least heard them on like yeah. playlists and stuff that i've looked into but yeah 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 that's that it's a tough one for me but yeah i guess that's my answer for now and unless i think of something better but i'm not gonna think of you it. won't no you'll, you'll have completely forgotten this entire episode by next I, week i it's it's entirely possible julian i'm not yeah. gonna i'm not gonna act like that's not true <laughs> i think that's a show justin i think that's a show julian yeah I think that's a show uh thank you to everybody for for hanging in there and listening um you can find us online individually, Justin. You can find me at Tyrone underscore Swift on Twitter.com. You can find uh, me streaming on Tyrone at, at Tyrone Swift. Yeah, on, on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Tyrone Swift. I, f- I forget how to promo or anything. It's been a long day. <laughs> oh, man, it's been a long day. Uh <laughs> <laughs> twitch.tv slash tyron swift um at tyron swift tv on youtube to find all the old stuff um i don't know what i'm gonna be streaming soon if i will be streaming soon who knows yeah. we'll see it's a busy week oh boy <laughs> <laughs> i've gathered that <laughs> yeah yeah uh, you can find me on Twitter at Julian underscore Titus. Uh, once again, the show is uh, at State Select Pod. You can also find me on Blue Sky. Just l- search for Julian Titus. I've tried to be on, be on there a little bit more. Um, thanks, as always, to the incredible Megan McDuffie for our theme song and interstitial tracks. Mm-hmm. Uh, thanks, as always, to friend of the show, John Golson, for being our announcer and doing our logo artwork. Uh, but that is going to do it for this State Select. I've been Julian Titus. He's been Justin Ham. We've been the State Select. 
signing off. Uh huh. The Stage Select is copyrighted and owned by Space Monkey Mafia Productions, specializing in independent podcasting. Please consider sharing the show with your friends and support us by joining our Patreon or donating to our coffee. Thank you and good night.